Welcome to the Complete Streets Commission's February 14th regular commission meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating in accordance with public health guidelines. I would like to introduce Complete Streets Commission members and city staff present. I'm Chair Jackie Sebrian. Commissioners present include Brian Altman, Katie Beruzzi, Sally Cole, Elizabeth King, and Christopher Coleman. City staff present include Kevin Chen, Christian Choi, and Matthew Hui. Matthew, would you please provide instructions to the commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Thank you, Chair Sebrian, and members of the Complete Streets Commission. Welcome everyone to the February 14th Complete Streets Commission meeting, and thank you for attending. For members of the public who wish to provide public comment for any item on tonight's agenda, after the chair calls for a public comment on that item, virtual attendees on Zoom may engage the raised hand feature. Or if you're calling in from a landline or cell phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand. If you're participating in person, please wait for the chair to call your name. You can then step up to the podium to make your comment. That concludes the instructions and I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Under reports and announcements, city staff and commission members may communicate general information of interest regarding matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No commission discussion or action can occur on any of the presented items. Kevin, do you have any reports and announcements for us? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good evening to everyone, so good to see you. I think this is the first time I've seen you guys uh, since the New Year, so happy belated, happy New Year's. Uh, so two items for uh, of interest to the commission. Uh, first and foremost, the city council authorized the Lifeline transportation program application. So the application is there to support um, our city's cross town and shoppers shuttle. So uh, if we are successful, we'll fund the um, the, fis the next two fiscal years. So fiscal year 24, 24 25, and then 25 to 26. Uh, the second item, which is uh, definitely of interest to you, would be the city council adopted the Vision Zero plan. Uh, so back in January, I know most of you are following that uh, very closely. So happy to announce that the city council uh, indeed adopted the plan. Now, the next step, um, what that means for uh, staff and the commission, as far as the next step is concerned, staff will be going back to uh, the drawing board, come up with sort of what, we, what I would consider to be sort of an in implementation framework, how we want to execute uh, the, the vision of the, uh, the Vision Zero, um, pun not intended. So, once we have that, we'll definitely be coming back to the uh, commission for feedback, and ultimately we'll be sharing that that um, that vision to the city council as well. So definitely want to stay tuned to, for that one as well. So with that, I will conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, let's see. Sorry. Under public comment, members of the public may address the Complete Streets Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. You are not required to provide your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the commission cannot respond to non-agenda items brought up under public comment other than to provide general information. Matthew, can you please call for general public comment? Yes, thank you, Chair. For virtual attendees who wish to provide public comment, you may engage the raised hand feature, or if you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand. If you're particip participating in person, please wait for the chair to call your name. You can then step up to the podium to make your comment. I see one raised hand from uh, Ross um, Silverstein, but Kevin, I can't. Um, uh, promote the these right now. Mm -hmm. I complete streets commission um, as a member of the public. Um, I am calling today to check in and inquire about the any updates to the intersection of Middlefield and Woodland Ave. Uh, it remains a super dangerous intersection with multiple lanes, fast cars, heavy traffic, blind corners, the sidewalk that ends, no crosswalks, no bike lanes, no signage. Um, it really is a disaster waiting to happen. 
And if it's not possible to fast track a permanent fix to the intersection, such as a, a roundabout or something, can we at least implement a quick, quick fix of some sort, like painting a crosswalk? Um, I think it would do wonders towards helping pedestrian safety around that area. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Seeing no other virtually raised hands, I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Under consent calendar, the commission takes action to approve routine business items in one motion unless a commissioner, city staff member, or member of the public requests that an item be discussed or continue to a later date. The only consent calendar item tonight is um, E1, rescind approval of parking removal on El Camino Real. Is there any clarification from the commission before I take public comment? Matthew, can you please call for public comments on this item? Yes, thank you, Chair. For virtual attendees who wish to provide public comment, you may engage the raised hand feature, or if you're calling in from a landline or cell phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand. If you're, particip you, if you're participating in person, please wait for the chair to call your name. You can then step up to the podium to make your comment. I see uh, one, Raised hand from Ross Silverstein. Hi, this is going to be really quick. Um, I, I just noticed in the agenda packet that there was no rationale given by Sam Trans on why they uh, felt like the bus stop was no longer needed to be moved and was wondering if someone on the, the commissioner staff might uh, ask that question to get a better understanding of why things might have changed from the uh, original presentation on that issue and now. Yes. Thank you, Ross. Seeing no more virtually raised hands, I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Kevin, do you have, um, is there an answer to this? Yes, yes, I do. Um, so uh, for secondhand information, I wasn't at the meeting, but uh, my understanding is that, you know, after reviewing the, the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages, uh, taking into account some of the the feedback that we heard at the meeting the other day, uh, I, I think there's definitely felt like there's a consensus among um, the, the team overall that it, it, we best kind of keep that parking space for the time being. Um, and then if we need to further evaluate in the, in the future, once the program is more mature, then we'll definitely be doing that. But for the time being, uh, staff's recommendation is to resend that approval. Just a kind of a general process question. Um, <clears throat> probably can guess where this is going. Um, what what can we as a group learn about the criteria that they used, and why not apply that beforehand as part of our reasoning? I mean, what's the the, the difference between um, what was presented, our decision, and then the criteria that was used to actually back away from it? I think just as a process, it would be interesting to learn what the criteria actually is. Yeah, and I think one of the, uh, unfortunately, you know, it wasn't a study that was done by the city. It was done by the Sam Tran folks. So obviously our input, they definitely came to us for input, but ultimately it is their study. I, I would say the, the lesson learned, at least from my perspective, is uh, making sure that we have the, the necessary um, evaluation criteria that were set, right? So I think there were a lot of question about, you know, the location of the stop sign, why one selection versus the other relative to where the crosswalk and the signal would be. And then the other one is some of the benefits that were being presented uh, as part of the relocation, you know, maybe going into some of the numbers and details a little bit more, being able to showcase what are those benefits from a, uh, a numeric, from a, a quantitative standpoint. So I think those are definitely things that we that we can take away from from that as a lesson learned, and I was applying it to our own projects, right? So for, for as a future reference, we're going to have a lot of projects coming to the commission that that will have you know present benefits, advantages, and disadvantages. Showing them appropriately, I think, is definitely going to help in the future. So, so more of a quantitative Quant uh, criteria flavoring, mm -hmm. not not 
absolute. Not necessarily right, not necessarily favoring, but just the fact that we want to present those data in front of you uh, as to help you make that decision. Can you say something? Commissioner King has. Yeah, I wanted to point out that um, that wasn't a unanimous decision. That was a split decision on this board. Absolutely. And I think that what we have, one of the takeaways I thought think is that in many cases, we need to look beyond the data. And the data presented to us was that Sam's Trans was going to have a speedier bus route mm -hmm. along the peninsula. But I think we need to have a more holistic approach uh, and remember that we are here as stewards of our community. And our community is not just bus riders, it's business owners, it's walkers, it's pedestrians. And um, I will gladly put forth a, um, I guess, do we have to do a new vote to um, overturn and rescind that? Okay. So I believe there's a motion by Commissioner King and then we'll need a second. If there's no other comments. Oh, I apologize, yeah. So, so the action, I mean, I'm, it's relatively small, but the action you're asking is, do we consent now, right? Right, so the the action in front of you tonight is to resent uh resent the resent. approval so if consent you consent to resent exactly so a, a yes vote would essentially reverse the previous action so what criteria should we use that? well in in this case i think um the fact <laughs> right there there you know to commissioner king's point you know there's the the data driven version of it that came from sam chan i think there's generally there there is the data to uh showcase that the recommendation that came from them would have benefit to the overall runtime. Now, some of the things that perhaps they didn't take into account was, you know, exactly how, you know, the amount of, of um, improvements that, that that received. And I think one of the commissioners had talked about some of the um, uh, developments that had gone around the area, what how that was taken into account, which, you know, wasn't necessarily done. So uh, again, not necessarily the fault of the Samtran study because it's a whole more holistic, it, 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 you know, something like this wouldn't be able to drill down each city's development around those stops, that's just a, not an exercise that can be done for, for that scale. So I would say, you know, if all of you remember the conversation that we had at that meeting, adding that to some of the testament, uh, testimonies that we heard from uh, the, the residents that spoke during that night, I think those are what we're taking into account. And so should, I, I, I suppose so would your decision be made at this point? Yeah, I remember it being a split decision and quite a big discussion. Absolutely, and I appreciate Commissioner King bringing that up. It was a very it, close vote. The appeal through. was of there after the meeting and after the decision, it was two business owners that then appealed it to the city council. So I guess that's the new data and new information upon which we can make today's decision. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was Sam Shen coming to us and, and um, but yeah, right. And recognizing it's, I, I don't think we need to think too hard about this. If Sam mm -hmm. Trans has decided they don't want to remove a bus stop or remove a bus stop, then there's no need to do what we had done. Yep. So I would move that we rescind unless we are already taking Commissioner King's move, in which case I'll second it. Or we should vote or something. <laughs> I think it's more related to just how we, as a group, were decisioning whether I, I'm, you know, whether Sam Trans came up with it or not. It's just, you know, what criteria are we using as a group mm -hmm. to make decisions and how we're using the process. I think different people use different criteria, and that's okay because we all represent different parts of the community and different ideas, and we come together and we, you know, sometimes sometimes we get input from the public that doesn't that is anecdotal in nature and jars against, you know, the data that we we have. And so sometimes um, we make a decision that looks at odds with, you know, the representative that showed up to talk to us and that's okay too. Yeah, can I, uh, yes. And um, thank you, Katie. Um, I it would also like, um, So we have a motion 
and a second to um, uh, approve the consent agenda. Right? Yeah. Yep. Sorry. That's correct. So yep. I have, uh, just for the record, I have a motion by Commissioner King and then a second by Commissioner Baruzzi. Yes. That's correct. Okay. So for those commissioners that would like to uh, vote affirmative to the motion, please raise your hand. And I'm seeing unanimous hands. Great. Thank you very much. Under regular business, the commission considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require commission approval. The first regular business item tonight is, um, I don't know, where is it? Back page, back of the page. One, two, C, D, oh my gosh. Did I? F. I'm sorry, I F1. can't read. Kevin. <laughs> um, so F1 is accept the Complete Streets Commission minutes uh, for the December 13, 2023 meeting. Thanks. F1 didn't show up on my page. I think that's why I got uh, lost. My apologies. That's I all right. Had, I had some uh, printing issues, so I guess it showed up there. That's okay. So uh, yeah, for the record, uh, F1, um, the item is accept the Complete Streets Commission minutes for December 13, 2023. Would a chair like me to just kind of run through that item then? That would be lovely. Okay, great. So in that case, uh, let's go ahead and ask for any clarifying questions about the minute from the commission. Okay, seeing none, if I can have Matthew go ahead and open the public comment period, that would be great. Thanks, Kevin. For virtual attendees who wish to revive public comment, you may engage the raise hand feature, or if you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand. If you're participating in person, please wait for the chair to call your name. You can then step up to the podium to make your comment. Seeing, oh, I do have a virtual comment from um, Karen Bar. Hello, can you hear? Yeah, we can hear. I am confused as to how the the council is voting on the road standards, uh, sorry, the transportation committee study for Menlo and uh, Menlo, uh, Ringwood Avenue and Coleman Avenue when the reports have not been finalized. Your attachment states that it's a final report, but it is not a final report and there's still public comment being sought and the residents of Ringwood and Coleman for the most part are opposed to the plan and hopefully their comments will be taken into account before the plan is finalized. So, so please, I'm sorry, Ms. No, Ms. Bo, you don't mind me jumping in real quick. Uh, so this is, um, we typically reserve the comments for agendas items for that agenda item. So right now we're just strictly talking about the minutes. If you don't mind, we just go, you can, if you can just reserve your comments until the item actually comes up, that would be great. Okay, sorry. Yeah, apologies for the um, confusion. Seeing no more virtually raised hands, I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so at this point, if the commission as a whole certainly open to question, um, additional comments or feedbacks that you might have, otherwise would we'll be um, happy to entertain a motion in a second to approve the minutes. Motion to remove the minutes. Uh, okay, great. Sorry, um, is that a motion uh, by Commissioner King, second by Commissioner Coleman? Great, so for those that would like to vote yes, if you can please raise your hand. Okay, great, I'm seeing, oh, uh, Commissioner Bruzzi, uh abstaining, thank you very much, thank you. Hey, just confirming with the chair, do you have F2 or should I continue? Um, no, my notes pick up with, you were gonna state the motion, call for final commissioner comments or clarifications and take a roll call vote. And then we go to informational items. Perfect, then in that case, we can go ahead and proceed with F2. Okay, mm -hmm. which is um, F2 is recommend that the city council accept the Coleman Ringwood Avenue study final report. 
Um, and then I think we start with clarifying questions. Or Actually, we, you, we have a presentation there, okay. by our- oh, Okay, great. So we have a presentation by our senior transportation engineer, Christian Choi. Uh, Christian, I believe, let me just make sure that we have her on here and she's gonna pull up her presentation and she'll be ready to go. Hi, good evening, uh, Chair Sebrian, Complete Streets Commissioners, Christy Ann Choi, Senior Transportation Engineer with the city. And tonight we're um, going to be presenting to you the uh, Coleman and Ringwood Avenue um, Transportation Study. And I'm joined um, by our consultant, uh, Cameron Nye with um, WTrans, and who's going to do most of the presentation. And then I'll end with um, what the next steps are. Okay, thank you, Christy Ann, and good evening, commissioners. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy to be here with you tonight now that the report is out to um, give an overview of the project as a whole and then uh, talk about the preferred uh, alternatives that rose to the surface um, throughout the study. Uh, my name is Cameron Nye, um, uh, lead engineer on the consultant team, uh, WTrans. Okay, so uh, we can move to the next slide. So just quickly, um, uh, brief overview of the presentation here tonight. Um, we will go over some of the some of the core details of the study for those that are unfamiliar or weren't at um, previous meetings. Um, and then we have an overview of the community engagement activities that took place. Then we can get into the preferred alternatives that rose to the surface. And we have some information to share on cost estimates. And then um, we'll talk about the next steps and where the study goes from here and wraps up. Okay, next slide. All right, so starting at the 30,000 foot level here, um, the study uh, area for the project was the entirety of Ringwood Avenue and Coleman Avenue. So Ringwood Avenue between Middlefield Road and Bay, and then Coleman from Ringwood over to Willow. So uh, I want to point out the jurisdictional boundaries here uh, in the study area. So that's represented by the orange line. Um, and you can see that Coleman Avenue is roughly bisected by the County of San Mateo and the city of Menlo Park. So two different jurisdictions on that corridor and then on Ringwood, um, similar. Um, but not quite in the middle. So the portion along Menlo Atherton High School there on the bottom left of the aerial that you're looking at is the portion um, within the city of Menlo Park. And then along the high school frontage is a uh, town of Atherton. So multiple jurisdictions here in the study area and then also multiple schools on these corridors as well, which really was a, a driving force um, in the need for the for the study. Um, and then the uh, study goal, which was set out at the beginning of the effort and confirmed um, through the first phase of community engagement is to develop a community preferred plan for both corridors to improve mobility for active modes of transportation and improve safety for all roadway users. So that was the overarching goal um, throughout the study process. And we can move to the next slide. Okay, so um, the study really took place uh, in four different phases. Uh, the first phase was an evaluation of existing conditions, needs, opportunities, constraints, and then that led into the development of the evaluation criteria, which was used to um, help evaluate and score alternatives later in the process. The second phase of the study involved uh, development of some initial design alternatives. And then that rolled into phase three, where the um, design alternatives were refined and evaluated and ultimately um, parsed down from an initial set of about four to five into a couple preferred alternatives. And then the fourth phase of the study, which was a direct need uh, and a result of the 
community engagement that was conducted in the third phase. Um, and that was the development of some uh, quick build pilot options um, in that evaluation process. So um, study uh, took place over a period of about two years. We kicked it off uh, in February, 2022. Um, and then I'll just point out some of these icons at the bottom of the graphic here. Uh, uh, community and technical advisory committees were held uh, regularly throughout the process and community engagement and public participation was a, a key element at, at every step of this process. And then the presentations to advisory bodies, uh, that is what we're doing today and we've been here previously. So we can uh, go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so um, at the core of this entire study effort is really um, an extensive community engagement and outreach process. Um, so at each one of those phases that took place, um, multiple um, community events and activities were held. Uh, the first phase uh, included uh, two walking tours on the corridors uh, with the community. And that's that um, picture on the top left there. Um, we also had multiple pop-up and pop-in events. Uh, the pop-up events were project specific on the corridors um, where we set up uh, boards and we talked to the community about some of the existing issues, um, needs and desires. Um, and then some pop-in events also happened where we popped in to uh, community events that were already happening. Um, and then a community survey was also held in that first phase. And the second phase um, included an interactive community workshop, um, which is represented in the picture in the first column, second, uh, second row down with those building blocks. That was a, um, an interactive event at Menlo Atherton High School. Uh, phase two also included another community survey. And then uh, phase three included a pop-up demonstration event on Coleman Avenue, which is depicted in the photograph on the uh, bottom right. And then a community open house was also held at Menlo Atherton High School. And that's the um, that's the third row down in the right column where plans were laid out and the community had an opportunity to see some of the um, draft design alternatives and provide input. And then phase four included a community webinar and a third community survey. So. Um, lots of community engagement and lots of activities really throughout all four phases of this study. Okay, so getting into the preferred alternatives that uh, rose to the surface throughout the process, um, we'll start with the more uh, simple design here on the right side for Ringwood Avenue. Uh, for Ringwood, um, a single long-term design alternative um, was identified. For Ringwood, uh, Coleman, uh, a little bit more involved. So uh, two potential future directions actually rose to the surface for Coleman Avenue. And that is that pilot option that I alluded to earlier, which would be um, more of a quick build, uh, short-term implementation project where you would look to um, utilize some lower cost materials to try some improvements on a more temporary basis if those improvements uh, were well received and the evaluation was successful, then those could remain in place or potentially move to something more permanent or then could move to the long-term uh, design alternative, um, which was identified. So two different paths for Coleman, a long-term design alternative and then a short-term pilot option. And then the, the tree underneath the long-term design alternative really gets to the point that um, although the preferred alternatives that were identified for Coleman Avenue within the city and county are similar um, in terms of design features, they're also um, a little bit different, recognizing um, the different uh, land use character and needs within the county section of Coleman Avenue versus the city section of Coleman Avenue. Sorry, so, can you repeat that sentence? You said that the reason they're different is because of, was it land use needs? Yeah, different different land use needs plays into it. Absolutely. And different uh, different um, right away available and just different um, character. So you'll dive into that a little bit more. Yes. Thank you. OK, and we can move to the next slide. 
Okay, so um, we will start with the city segment of Coleman Avenue, and the preferred uh, design alternative here is an option that would uh, remove parking on one side of the street. Um, that side is uh, TBD and would be determined during a more detailed uh, design phase. Uh, right now, it is shown uh, adjacent to uh, the multi-use pathway, but could also be on the opposite side. Um, and then the removal of parking on one side of the street would allow for that space to then be reallocated towards a wider, in essence, sidewalk on the north side of the street. So along the apartment complex frontages. Um, and essentially that would function as a raised shared use pathway. Uh, so um, it would accommodate pedestrians as well as uh, cyclists um, that perhaps aren't comfortable riding in the street, um, potentially uh, a younger cyclist, school age. Um, and then within the street itself, uh, traffic calming measures would be implemented to try to really make that experience riding in the street um, more palatable for those that wish to do so. So under this uh, option, um, cyclists would have the ability to ride in the street and share the travel lanes if they would like or utilize that off street um, raised shared use pathway. And then um, just quickly also want to, this is, we can back up um, for just a second. Also want to point out that um, numerous um, speed reduction measures would be implemented uh, with this design alternative. So that includes uh, bulb outs at intersections, um, raised crossings, uh, speed tables were also identified within this design alternative. Um, and then also separately, um, the installation of always stop controls at the Santa Monica Avenue intersection um, was also included in this alternative to really help to um, during these concentrated volumes during school pickup and drop off and to help facilitate um, uh, safer and more efficient pedestrian crossings from one side of Coleman to the other at that location. And we can go ahead and we can jump to the next slide. Okay, so the preferred long-term alternative that arose within the county segment of Coleman Avenue um, is similar to the city in that a pathway would be on that northern side of the street. And while that would primarily be expected to serve pedestrians, it would also accommodate those less experienced cyclists. So I did want to point that out. And then within the um, within the streetscape itself, some uh, widening would be needed for the installation of class two bike lanes. So bike lane would be provided in each direction and street parking would in essence be eliminated on that north side of the street where uh, the pathway is and then on the opposite side of the street uh, um, on street parking would be retained in certain spots where there's adequate uh, right away for that and then um, pathway materials could be um, permeable um, or just uh, your more traditional pavement and then traffic calming was really a, a, a key consideration within the county segment as well, um, including some enhancements to the existing traffic circles that are um, present at the many intersections within the county with the inscribing the trees. And then uh, speed tables were also discussed uh, along with uh, some lane narrowing. So both of the alternatives have a heavy emphasis on traffic calming. And we can go ahead and move to the next slide here. Okay, so I had previously said that um, two potential directions arose for Coleman. So I we just uh, went over the preferred long-term design options. And then um, additionally and separately, a pilot option also rose to the surface here. So during the third phase of the study, there was some concern voiced about um, pavement widening uh, within the county, um, potentially some impacts to drainage. Um, and so a more short, short term uh, pilot option was developed here and four different options were considered. This one rose to the surface as the preferred option, which in essence would be a road closure um, somewhere near the city county boundary. So 
Um, really what this would do is it would prevent um, motorists drive from being able to drive from one side of Coleman to the other. And so traffic would be redistributed to other streets in the area. The design would um, attempt to uh, provide access for um, emergency vehicles and then allow pedestrians and cyclists to also pass through um, without being diverted to other streets. So the thought process behind this, alter this um, pilot option here is that the reduced traffic volumes on Coleman then would um, provide a better, um, better cycling and walking experience within the existing streetscape on Coleman. So no um, tree removal would be required within the county uh, in, the, in this option. And then neither with this option or with any of the long-term design alternatives would tree removal be required within the city. So I did want to point that out. And then this option would also retain the existing on-street um, parking. Um, so really this option looks to um, make the most of what's currently out there and enhance that uh, on-street uh, cycling and walking experience through reduced traffic volumes. And we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, and then um, getting over to Ringwood Avenue here, this is the preferred long-term design alternative that rose to the surface here. And this, uh, this option would retain the existing bike lanes that are currently out there on Ringwood, but then really look to enhance those via the provision of buffered bike lanes um, near the high school, as well as a uh, low, uh, Laurel lower school. Um, and really the, um, the provision of the buffered bike lanes would uh, prevent motorists during pickup and drop off from pulling into that uh, space and essentially making it so that um, it becomes just like a loading zone or a, a queuing area and preventing cyclists from being able to utilize that space. So um, the race separation device here um, to protect cyclists from the travel lanes is a, a key component of this plan. And then on the school side of Ringwood Avenue, um, a multi-use pathway would be would be provided over there. So again, uh, the, the kind of the common theme here and that off-street shared use pathway is that it would accommodate pedestrians and then um, the, those cyclists that didn't want to ride in the street would have the ability to ride on that shared use pathway. Um, some future consideration that would be needed as part of this um, design alternative here is that it could require removal of the right turn lane at the Menlo Atherton High School driveway. So I did want to point that out. And then uh, Ringwood Avenue also did um, include some traffic calming measures, and those included some speed tables, uh, speed feedback signs, and then lane narrowing to 10 feet along the entire corridor. And we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so in terms of cost, we're um, looking at uh, quite a difference here in terms of the long-term design alternatives versus the road closure pilot option. So um, Coleman Avenue, the preferred alternative, considering both the county and the city, you know, you're looking at right around seven and a half million. Um, and then compared to the road closure pilot option, substantially less, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000. A um, couple of things to keep in mind here, the long-term design alternatives do include um, design in addition to construction, also construction management and administration on the agency side of things. And then included in the road closure pilot option cost would be uh, data collection as well as an evaluation period and some community outreach and then the actual construction cost itself as well. And then Ringwood Avenue, the single um, long-term design alternative for Ringwood uh, has a cost of uh, around eight million, and then that includes both the county and the city. Um, and then also, just want to point out again that um, a portion of the improvements um, for Ringwood Avenue would actually be within the town of Atherton. So um, that would be along the high school at the high school frontage at the southern end. And we can move to the next slide. 
and I will go ahead and kick it back to Christiane. Thanks, Cameron. Um, so uh, tonight, commissioners, we're looking um, for your um, recommendation to city council to accept the final report and then ask for any um, input on the next steps for Coleman Avenue, um, whether um, it's the pilot or the long-term alternative. And then the um, this uh, study will also be presented to the county's um, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and then ultimately um, our city council and um, the Board of Supervisors would um, be approving it um, later this spring. So that concludes the um, presentation. And so we'll turn it back to you for any questions. Any clarifying questions from the commission <clears throat> before we take public comment? I have a quick one. Um, so what wasn't clear to me is if you proceed with the pilot, which is really only talking about the county section, um, what that means for the city section of Coleman. So to me, it seems like the pilot doesn't really benefit the city section that much. Maybe there's a little bit of reduced traffic, but maybe it just flows down Santa Monica or something. So would you still go out for grants and look for ways to construct that multi-use pathway past the Coleman block apartments? So I think for the pilot option, we'd be just looking at, initially, we would just look at what the changes and you know how that what the results look like before we would look at you know future grants or um because it could be that the tr the volumes are reduced enough that there doesn't need to be kind of that you know longer term constructed pathway so is the theory here then that there would be so many fewer cars driving on that first section of Coleman in the city that parents who currently don't let their second graders ride to and from school would have a change of heart? Yeah, I think that that's um, the reasoning behind the closure is that the volumes would re be reduced um, because you can't get through from Willow to Ringwood. Just to build on that question, um, so my understanding about the pilot is that aside from the red bollards or whatever in the middle that says, you know, you can't go through, there isn't any added protection in terms of bike lanes or enhanced sidewalks or pathways or reduction of parking of any kind. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm in complete support of this option to close part of Coleman down as I currently live on Coleman Avenue. I'm departing soon. But um, I have seen on multiple occasions vehicles hitting people because they just fly down that road because they would avoid Bay or Middlefield to get to their destination. Um, I've been hit a couple times taking the kids to Lower L in you know, my arms just because cars are so close to pedestrians. So closing that down is not only like a sustainability an environmental factor because, you know, the cost is low, but we won't have equipment there shoving dirt around and um, removing roadways, right? But we're just going to, you know, shut the road down, have vehicles use Bay or, you know, Middlefield, Mayfield, Middlefield. Um, and I truly support that. questions on... I, I have one. Um, among the alternatives listed for Coleman, that uh, among the alternatives that were considered but not recommended was one-way traffic. Um, is there um, is there a reasoning that we could know about why? Yeah. Um, so the the primary reason is we didn't get a lot of support for the one-way option and. If you want some more detail, I'll probably ask um, Cameron to help respond to that. I guess that's yeah, okay. yeah. The the one way option um, didn't rise to the same level. There was some support early on, and then through the discussion of um, potential circulation impacts um, and what that might look like on in the surrounding neighborhood, 
that option didn't really um, rise to the same level that the road closure option did. So um, a little bit of background on that one. And then I can com confirm that the um, thought process with the pilot option is that rerouting traffic off of Coleman onto other streets would then enhance that um, use, use of user experience on Coleman Avenue itself for pedestrians and cyclists. Yeah. Just a, a, a couple quick questions. Is it, this is the final report? Are we looking at the final report or is there a big proposed final report? Presenting yeah, this this is the proposed final report. I this mean, if the there could be some edits that we might make, um, but this, this is the final report. Yeah, this would be considered the final. Are there any statistics um, to, to complement people's experiences and opinions and uh, the qualitative stuff? Are there any statistics on, you know, a car throughput, estimated improvements in safety? Uh, for, for kids or whatever. I mean, what are the quantitative measures that are being used to judge and compare these alternatives? Yes. Uh, as, or is that in some other report? Yeah, I mean, there's some, I think there's some detail in the um, final, maybe it was in the appendices um, and Cameron can kind of help me out here, but there's a whole um, evaluation criteria that we used where we had different um, um, things like comfort, comfort for bicyclists, comfort for um, cyclists, kind of reduction potential to reduce um, speeds and and such. And so we kind of ranked each um, alternative or those uh, based on that. The final report, so that folks could take a look at it real quickly. I mean, I have a hard time judging whether one of these are good or not, other than living on the street itself. If it wasn't for like, well, we expect you know this kind of improvement in terms of safety or this improvement in car volume or not car volume or you know whatever the quants are, uh, it's hard to compare these other than just um, what's in this report. Yeah, I, I would include I would include yeah. a, 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 maybe a synopsis of the data that you do have, and and also community support on this is huge because even more to the point. I think yeah, we've had more community support on this and also outreach programs from your you know industry to help support these decisions. Yeah. I think that's really important to see what yeah. people have said, what those community yeah. members have decided on is the best method of the mode of yeah. transport down that street. Yeah, page 13, no, it's page 13. Um, um, I, I have another question about the, sorry, I'm still struggling with this theory um, of, sorry, um, Okay, there's there's just for the public benefit on page 13 of the report that we're looking at, there are some basic statistics about like roadway volumes and things like that that are getting handed back and forth behind me. Um, so I, I am still concerned about um, one street closure being the sole thing that we hope will change the character of Coleman right now, especially given all of the intersections and the driveways and the density in the city portion. And I am hoping that the other thing that you mentioned, which is all of the traffic calming, is still something you're looking at as well. Yes, that, okay. I mean, so we we can also like consider like one of the options could be also like install the traffic calming as part of as the part pilot. of the pilot. Yes. Okay, that, I mean that that at least then would. I, I don't know. I mm -hmm. I'm also curious about enforcement. So. I can imagine that a long-term installation of a street closure would look something like a bollard or something that that emergency vehicles and buses would have the capacity to like move up and down. At least that's what I've seen on campus at Stanford. Um, but I don't know how you pilot that. That's very expensive. And I guess what I, it sounds like what a pilot would defend on it would depend on is enforcement. And um, I think enforcement efforts in that area have been. Um, especially in the un, in the unincorporated segment, which is under the purview of the sheriff's department, I think have not been terrific in the past. So I'm curious about how staff are thinking about that and addressing that. Are we basically just hoping it's like an honor system? So, yeah, I mean, you're correct that it's not going to be quite like a baller where you can probably go up and down. Um, but we, yeah, we were looking at some we've been talking about kind of what options would be there. I mean, it would most likely be some type of striping and signage um, and kind of narrowing and then a combination with enforcement. And so we'll definitely have to um, 
work with our um, Sheriff MPD forces. Thank you. I was just trying to identify my clarifying question so I didn't <laughs> give, give you something different. Um, I just want to uh, agree with those on the commission who said that in the, it, I think it's important in the final report, which uh, is, is included about the nature of the input received and maybe why some alternatives were rejected. I know that wasn't in the slide deck, but I just wonder, you know, just my personal opinion, if you've considered when you present to council, if this is the sort of um, length or, or breadth of slide deck you're considering, I might push that up to the deck around um, the some of the statistics around what you believe the impact will be based on the um, proposal that you're making and also um, maybe a bit more meat around the nature of public input and why small terms were rejected because um, I think those are really another way of making your argument that these are the ones, these are why you're recommending you know, these. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, I think one of the things that I had a question on, which um, I think is is difficult to, to see when you're looking at two slides is in the um, option on Coleman going from city to county, the city section to the county section for the long-term options. What is the experience of a bicyclist, like let's say going from Willow, on Coleman from Willow to Ringwood, when the change happens. I think that's something that you might wanna highlight or illustrate um, better in this slide deck. And maybe you could speak to that now. It is a clarifying question around. So if you're, if you're because those two things are, are quite different, you know, the way they're designed, and, but they're right against each other. If you're a five-year-old bicyclist, for example, with Commissioner Bruzzi's, um example of the user, if you're a five-year-old bicyclist and you're going down on the city portion, what happens when you get to the county portion? Are you crossing the street to then gain access to a, a, a safer route on the other side? Or how is that going to work? Right. In? So just to clear, are you talking about on the long-term yeah, design long -term option for options, Coleman? Coleman, what do you see any, how does one navigate going from city to county when the treatment of the street changes? Like, so, and do you see so any? So I think the both long-term options, the path would be on the same side of the street. Okay. So it wouldn't, they wouldn't have to cross to continue. Okay. Um, and so, and then as we work through design, we would need to think about how that transitions from the type, you know, the type of materials and, okay. and such. Okay. I, I can add a little bit to that as well. So um, uh, correct that the pathway would be on the same side of the street. So let's say someone traveling, um, on that pathway heading toward heading from Willow to Ringwood would have a relatively consistent uh, path all the way across if it's a cyclist or pedestrian. If they're coming the other direction, though, again, this is under the long term design alternatives and they were riding, say, in the bike lane heading towards Willow um, and then they got to the city for preferred long term alternative and there was no longer a bike lane there. Um, the concept plans that were prepared um, for this alternative include a raised crosswalk um, somewhere near the city county boundary to help facilitate um, that continuous path of travel. So someone that was in the bike lane, they could then get over to the pathway or if they're more experienced, they would then at that point take the lane. Um, but there would would be a, um, a connection there to help with that path of travel. Mm -hmm. And then a couple other things I also did want to point out is that in the appendices of the report, yeah. um, there are these 10% level concept plans um, for um, the entirety of both corridors. And then there's also a community engagement summary um, that summarizes all of the engagement activities that took place throughout um, the project. And then a couple other things um, in the appendices are um, the evaluation criteria um, and then also a description of all of the design alternatives that were considered throughout the process. So um, uh, lots of material um, in yeah. the appendices. Yes, I think the suggestion in that regard that I was making was, um, I don't know, I think that the presentation could use potentially just even if it's a summarized synopsis of, some, of something that's in the appendix, like the community feedback or, you know, it, it might it might be helpful, but let's move on from that. Um, I guess I, that was my, hold on. Oh, yes. I think Commissioner Bruzzi got to this, but I'm just curious. So um, I want to be clear. I want to be clear with this question around the process. So if this evening the commission makes a recommendation that something be included, let's say in the pilot, 
that isn't present in the current um, presentation. The process allows for maybe an amendment or an editing of the current proposal before it goes to the council. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, we would likely put in our staff report the feedback from the commission and okay. what we that what we heard. Oh. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Sorry, I have another set of questions, and I can't believe I'm the person asking this one. Um, but I'm curious about outreach to the Laurel community and to people who live along Bay and Santa Monica and Berkeley, because what we're what we're saying is effectively we have a hypothesis that all of that morning school traffic is going to dissipate, and that in theory, like a lot of because we've made it safer on Coleman, a lot of the people who currently drive their kids to school back and forth might consider biking with them or letting them bike with friends or in a bike bus or something. Um, but I I don't know if the Laurel community actually knows that we have this hypothesis for them. And I'm curious about whether or not um, the school is aware that this is a change that might be made. And then adjacent to that, I know that a lot of kids who live in my neighborhood um, in the Flood Triangle area currently use Bay um, to get to Laurel. And if in fact, what happens is frustrated parents are just driving rapidly through sort of around the barriers and going elsewhere. Um, I think some of those kids biking along Bay to the, um, I think what they do right now is they actually go through the, through the VA is what I've been told. Um, I worry that that will introduce safety hazards into that bike network for those kids. And so not saying that we shouldn't do it, but I'm saying that the ripple effects should be explored with maybe a broader set of stakeholders than just the people who currently live on Coleman. And I don't want to slow things down too much if everybody likes the pilot, but I also feel like there should be formal outreach from the school leadership to parents saying, hey, FYI, we're thinking about doing this if you're currently somebody who's driving back and forth between upper and or lower Laurel, um, what would you think about a pilot where you let your kids bike? Um, so I'm hoping that staff will consider doing that if they haven't already, and maybe you have, and you can tell me about it. So I think that um, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. Um, Cameron is, is the, is there someone from Laurel on the, um, the either the TAC or CAC? Great question. Um, I know we've had um, great representation from the high school, um, Laurel Lower School. I know that we've had parents present at um, various different outreach events that happened. Um, and I know that was uh, some of the pop-ups and pop-ins as well as um, the um, uh, demonstration event that happened on the corridor, but I um, definitely uh, do like the idea, though, of some school-specific outreach around um, the pilot, and I, I think with the pilot in general, um, proposing it as a pilot really, really is the key because it's kind of, it allows for that ability to try something on a more temporary basis to really see what those impacts might actually be. Um, you know, it, it is a, a bit of a, a guess to a certain degree on um, what those impacts might be. So a road closure as a pilot option really does make a lot of sense to really allow for that evaluation period and then assess whether whether the impacts were what we thought or maybe they're different. And then at that point, um, something different could be tried or one of the long term alternatives could be pursued. Um, quick clarifying, Cameron. So with all the outreach that was done, and I commend you for doing so much, was this particular specific pilot option the subject of a conversation with the community? Yes, um, the community webinar that was held um, in early December, um, we discussed uh, all four of the pilot options that were brought forward. And then a follow-up survey was also um, administered on the heels of that webinar and um, th this uh, road closure option was uh, the, the looked at most favorably among all four of them. Did you track in that final survey um, what the origin story of participants was? Like, 
were you able to discern, for example, data from people who live immediately along the corridor versus people who use the corridor? Yes, we, we were able to um, synthesize some of those findings um, and we did collect some demographic information as part of that survey. And um, I can help get some of that information for you um, or the community engagement uh, summary in appendix um, B um, might have some of those graphs. Yeah, I'd be really curious about that because I know there was a lot of support earlier on for the long-term options that we've discussed. And I know there was broad participation at some of those earlier workshops. I just worry that I, I know the pilot came up fairly late in the process. Like it was a, it hadn't been discussed throughout. And I would hope that the last survey where you got overwhelming support in favor of the pilot, you know, also had broad participation from a lot of different stakeholders. Um, so I, I can add a little bit to that. So um, in that last survey around the pilots, there was a strong preference for those that lived directly on Coleman towards this pilot option. Um, we were also able to look at those that live in the area, but not directly on the street. And it wasn't as strong of a preference, but it still was um, the most popular of the four um, pilot options. Though the correlation wasn't quite as strong as for those that live directly on Coleman. Um, I think the next item is Matthew, can you please call for public comments on this item? Yes, thank you, Chair. For virtual attendees who wish to provide public comment, you may engage the raised hand feature, or if you're calling in from a landline or cell phone, press star nine to raise your virtual hand. If you're participating in person, please wait for the chair to call your name. You can then step up to the podium to make your comment. I see four online raised hands right now, and I'll start with uh, Francesca. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Hi, I don't know if you can see me, but uh, here I am. Um, so my name is Francesca Segre, and I am a resident on Menlo Oaks Drive. I'm also a parent of two children who uh, bike and walk along Coleman and in the Menlo Oaks area. I'm also a daily user of Coleman Avenue myself. Uh, my other hat I wear is I'm a school board member for the Menlo Park City School District. And so I'm really looking out for children. I've been to almost every single meeting. I think I've been to every meeting uh, regarding Coleman. And I was one of the original people who asked for improvements to safety along Coleman so that children could bike and so that children could walk and be safe. But what I want is improved safety and improved access to the schools. And we were going along that path until these other things showed up and suddenly there's this proposal to cut off access of Coleman. Reducing access to school was never a stated intention of this study. I think that cutting off access on Coleman Avenue for drivers would reduce access. And I'm thinking about children coming from the other side of Willow, but I'm also thinking about families who are driving in from East Palo Alto. This corridor needs to be open and it needs to be safe. And I think closing it off makes for a lovely neighborhood for me, but it only serves people in the immediate neighborhood and especially those along Coleman and does not serve the wider community, especially the students. So I would have supported a one way and did support a one way towards the schools, but I would never support cutting off Coleman. I mean, this is a, 
this is an integral artery for getting children to and from school. So I would highly recommend putting in safe bike lanes, safe walkways, going in both directions, and protecting the trees along the way and protecting the character. Um, and I'd be happy to follow up with anybody else who wants to talk about this later, but um, get the kids to school, please. Don't, don't, don't turn them away. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. The next public speaker is Meredith. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Meredith Bergen Bailey. I am a Laurel parent, um, and I wanted to respond to Commissioner Bruzzi's concern that the Laurel community be reached out to. Um, I was actually a member of the CAC along with two other parents um, starting about two years ago, I think when the project first started. Um, additionally, I think Cameron and his team has done a really nice job reaching out to us as a community. Um, between the pop-up, it was actually held at our Laurel lower campus, um, the pop-ups at the uh, on Coleman as well. Um, additionally, as a Safe Routes to School parent uh, volunteer, we also made sure that uh, multiple of the Coleman Ringwood meeting um, announcements appeared in our weekly newsletter, um, including a couple times in the entire MPCSD uh, community news section in all of the schools in our school district. Um, so thank you, Commissioner Bruzzi, for the question and for thinking about our school community. Um, and I do indeed feel like we were uh, really well reached out to. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. The next speaker is Mark Shaw. Hi, this is Mark Shaw. I do live on Coleman. I have uh, two kids. We use Coleman a lot for bikes and cars. Um, the one thing nobody's brought up and in the closure, which I wasn't aware of in the closure, is first off, 90% of this issue is within about 25 minutes a day. Coleman is a ghost town the rest of the time. It's in the morning when kids are going to school from about 8 to 8.30. And in the afternoon when they're coming home from school between 3 and 3.30, 3.45, depending upon which school and what lets out. And it seems inconceivable that the county and the city would go and spend $7.8 million extra dollars with no apparent definite numbers to show that it's going to improve safety and throughput when you have the option of closing it. It doesn't actually need to be closed the full time. This issue is really a non-issue. It's a ghost town the other time. So, you know, there's been outreach and this option did come up. It was proposed early on. It was ignored until it was brought to the surface. And the earlier comment about, you know, throughput and access, there's plenty of access. Coleman was never, ever meant to be a through access for cars to school. If you go back and look at the history um, and even permission was given for school bus to come as long as it didn't become a throughput to school. So it's only become more dangerous the more you let more cars through and m looking at a $7.8 million plan, which doesn't improve safety and doesn't improve some of the issues that are already there with stop signs and bumps, it seems honestly a neglect of the duty of the council if you go ahead with the larger proposal without doing the short shorter proposal and i you know it would be a misspending of county funds and it would also be uh against what was agreed to with the residents along actually coleman and we are looking for the interest of the entire community most of us do have kids on that street and we use it probably the most of anybody in the surrounding area so, you know, it would it does not seem to be the right thing to do to proceed with a much more extensive plan and sort of take insult that you guys call it the preferred plan on the management when you have much cost effective solution and when budgetary should be tight, not free to spend money on a project that really is not necessary in that area to promote safety and access for a 90% of the day um, that doesn't have any issue with access or promotability to get to schools. Thank you, Mark. 
The next speaker is Kevin. Right. Uh, Chair, Commission members, staff, uh, W Trans Consultant. I'm Kevin Rennie from the Willows neighborhood with my family. I have two kids. We ride to Lower Laurel Elementary as, as often as we can. I had a question. The county meeting tomorrow got canceled because the report was not finalized. Just questioning, questioning if that impacts any changes that were discussed here. Uh, the pilot proposed. I do have concerns about it. Um, I'm currently in opposition about it until we get greater details. The survey made it seem like it was going to get totally closed to everything, but then the details came out that it's going to be open to buses, Samtrans, emergency vehicles. Um, it will be a bit of a pinch point because if you're having a bus come in either direction and then you have to go from the side of the road to the middle of the road and you're head on with a bus and a five-year-old and a with a on a bike. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So I'd like to learn more before we even do the pilot. Uh, part two of that is when is the pilot going to actually happen? Cause summer is coming up. So like the pre previous speaker said, it's going to be a ghost down for the summer. And then, uh, is it going to be baked? Um, let's see. I'm just reading my notes here. Uh, the County side, how, uh, the, the transition between the pathways would be nice between the city side and the county side, and it would be nice to be continuous, not from concrete to asphalt and have a bunch of transitions. Uh, and then getting back to the city side of Coleman within the pilot, if we do a pilot or any type of pilot, it was discussed removing parking um, on the apartment side, which is the north side. And all the documents I read through, it says uh, the the parking is going to be removed on the east side or the north side. It keeps going back and forth. So I just want a clarification that the uh, parking is actually going to get removed on the north side, which the, is the apartment side. Um, additionally, on Ringwood, the bike lanes, are there so, still going to be gutters or will they be removed? And also there's usually flooding standing water for days afterwards, is that considered? Um, additionally, because of budgetary options and issues, is Atherton paying for any of this? I yield back, thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Karen. Hello, I am uh, participating because I'm a resident of Ringwood and have a lot of concerns about this. Uh, Ringwood is basically a quiet neighborhood street, uh, just like Coleman for most of the time. There's a half an hour in the morning at drop off, a half an hour in the afternoon at pick up, when school is in session, when it's busy. And I think it's a false premise to say that you are planning to add 12 to 14 foot bike paths, and that has something to do with safety problems, and somehow that will make it better. And the truth is that it is provable by looking at all of the accident reports over the last 10 years that there have been, from Coleman to Bay, there have been zero pedestrian accidents. Only one bike accident in all those years was eight and a half years ago, just uh, it was 200 feet north of Parkwood Drive which is pretty far down near Bay. And it was on a Sunday, two weeks before school even started. And there have been, there's only been one vehicle collision since January, 2011. And that was uh, also on a Sunday. So to say that there are unsafe road conditions on Ringwood is false. If there are problems at the Middlefield Ringwood intersection, or if there have been a couple of issues at Coleman, and Ringwood then deal with those intersections rather than put something that's going to be so disruptive for all of Ringwood, this massive freeway down the down the street. Also, uh, I would say that uh, we were not aware of any survey in December. We were not involved in it. The only survey we received was on Menlo Oaks Road Standards Commission. And we were told that Ringwood and Coleman could not participate in that survey. So I'm not sure how uh, my neighbors and my husband and I were excluded, but our input is, uh, we feel not being included in this. 
And I would also lastly say that there's no need for an RRFB system at the crosswalk at Ringwood and Edge, where there have been zero, zero collisions of any kind reported at that intersection. So to spend a fortune upgrading what's already flashing beacons at that crosswalk makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, anyway, those are my comments. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Karen. Next speaker is Cassandra. Hi, uh, my name is Cassandra Lopez. I, um, My husband and I have lived on Coleman since 2017. We have three school-aged children who use Coleman for biking and walking every day. Um, and thank you for all the work and research you guys have done here. Um, we have obviously experienced many of the challenges that the project is intended to solve. Um, but we wanted to ensure that there, we had a few questions um, and wanted to see that they were addressed when you consider the proposed pilot and the long-term plan for Coleman Avenue. So the pilot uh, plan, um, I don't really understand why we wouldn't be testing out traffic calming measures such as temporary speed bumps, flashing speed zone signs, or making Coleman a one-way. I'm not really sure why that's not included in the plan, uh, the pilot plan, <clears throat> excuse me. And then uh, enforcement. Um, I don't see that there's a, an enforcement plan for the no through traffic limitation. Part of the issue right now with speed and oversized vehicles on Coleman is that there needs to be more traffic enforcement. I mean, I've lived here for seven years and I, I, I honestly can't say I've ever seen a car, a police car or a police vehicle doing any traffic or speed enforcement on Coleman. Um, so I worry a lot that folks will just feel frustrated by um, this pilot plan and become more aggressive driving um, during these uh, peak drive times. Um, and then for the long-term plan, I think we also need to, and no one has has mentioned this, but we need to keep in mind that Coleman is not a 100% single family home residential street. So the idea of um, this multi-use uh, bike path, walking path um, concerns me. Um, it We house a number of multi-use housing buildings. So there are many people from these apartments parking cars along Coleman, 30 to 40 cars parked midday, 50 to, over 50 to 60 parked at night. My question is where would those cars go once the parking is not allowed on one side of the street? Um, I don't see any parking limitation um, ideas in the pilot. Uh, and I think this would cause a major disruption to the people, not just living in the in these buildings and these apartment buildings, but to the people that live on Coleman as well as the surrounding streets. So I wanted to just um, add that as a, a point of consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. The next speaker is Ross. Hi, commissioners, um, city staff, and uh, everyone who's been working really hard on this project. Thanks for your um, time this evening. Um, I have uh, two quick comments about Ringwood, and then I'll get to my perspective on Coleman. Um, for, for Ringwood, just really quickly, uh, my I have a recommendation that would prohibit left turns from Ringwood into Menlo Atherton High. Um, those left turns back up traffic and are particularly dangerous for pedestrians and bikers because whenever there's a small window, drivers will speed across the street as quickly as possible to get into the parking lot. Um, and it's very dangerous for anyone there. I have almost been hit by a car doing that exact thing, um, trying to get into the parking lot. There's already another entrance on Oak Grove for drivers coming from Middlefield. Uh, secondly, on Ringwood, I would just recommend adding bike boxes at all the intersections so bikers can safely transition from being in the bike lane to turning when needed. Um, so on to Coleman, as someone who bikes my son uh, to school on Coleman every single day, rain or shine, um, I'm in favor of bo both measures of the three traffic restriction pilot and the long-term infrastructure improvements. I think that changing the character of Coleman away from being a cut through corridor for cars back to its original intended nature of being a local local neighborhood bike boulevard is the first step in making it truly a safe route to school. Uh, these changes are also very aligned with our recently approved Vision Zero plan, making Coleman safer for all the elementary and high school kids who bike to school every day isn't, uh, it's not only important from a safety standpoint, but it will also encourage more students and families to bike or walk instead of drive, uh, which will lower some of the heavy traffic burden around our schools and neighborhoods today. Menlo Park has roughly half the percentage of students who bike to school from Palo Alto, 
And it's not because we have different kids, it's because we have different biking infrastructure. Um, I wanna echo previous comments and concerns about compliance to any restrictions. Traffic enforcement is very scarce, especially around intra-jurisdictional intra areas. Um, my recommendation would be to put a plastic bollard um, in the middle of Coleman if we don't want people to go through. Emergency vehicles and buses could easily go over that, but private cars would be hesitant too. One additional last concern from the pilot is that it does nothing for pedestrians on the county side. Uh, there are a lot of pedestrians, kids and parents who walk to school every day who have to walk along the sidewalkless dirt path, sandwiched between cars, bikers, garbage bins. Um, maybe if the pilot proves successful, some elements of the long-term option could still be implemented there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ross. The next speaker is Mary. Um, yes, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to address um, some of the things that seem to be not quite resolved on the long-term um, study. I know there's still um, things to be worked out, but one of the questions is like, what kind of surface would be in play, whether it's, um, you know, concrete or a permeable surface. But my question would be, if it's concrete, I think, or, or you know, a solid surface, I don't know the the proper uh, materials here, sorry. Um, then I think we have issues with drainage and already a problem in the, in in this particular um, street. And so like concerned about how that would work out. And if it's a permeable surface, um, I don't know about if small kids riding a bike on that, is that stable enough for them? Or is it just gonna cause them not really be a, a real s solution? Um, if you went with something like, decompose granite or something for a small child riding a bike that doesn't seem like a great solution for them either so curious how those kinds of things would be resolved prior to making any huge investments in this um and then also just want to point out that you know menlo park has tree uh, you know is a tree city and so just the impact of having to take out this many trees um is something that i want to make sure that we don't do lightly it's not something that could be you know, put back later. So um, just want to, you know, make sure people like if we can consider um, a less permanent solution and try that first would be definitely um, something that I would be strongly in favor of. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Barrison. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Varjan Ebrahimian. Um, I live on Wainwood. I've been here for almost 20 years. And um, I, 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 have to, uh, I have to say that uh, I heard about the community outreach. And unfortunately, um, I actually did not know about it. So I would have hoped maybe there was, in this day and age of uh, digital uh, uh, communication, that there was a way for us to get informed of this, but um, but nevertheless, this caught me by surprise a little bit, this uh, proposals. And I wanted to ask a question or like to understand better if there was any study done on the traffic patterns that, um, uh, that not just uh, Coleman and Greenwood, but the traffic patterns that from all, all the other arteries that feed into it if that was actually studied as is today, and um, and for each of these options, if they were actually modeled to see in, in which way they would be uh, affecting this traffic patterns, or if there is a metric or some, something more concrete and measurable to know what is the effect of this uh, in just this community and, and the surrounding. And uh, I did have one other issue that I, was a little concerned about uh, uh, it's uh, on Greenwood cars that are typically parked uh, in the no parking areas, and um, and that no parking I guess is not enforced. Um, what the effect would be uh, with this changes um, if the cars continue that behavior? In which way does it affect these options? That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Barroso. Seeing no more virtually raised hands, I return the meeting to the chair.
Thank you. Through the chair, I do have two public speaker cards here. So if you uh, let me call them up as well. Great, thank you. First speaker is uh, Mr. Jim uh, Strahan. Can you hear me? I live at, my name is Jim Strayhorn. I live at 1021 Coleman Avenue, which is between Ringwood and Menlo Oaks. Uh, most of you who have driven by there will notice that there's a very large hedge pushing into the street. That's our home. And I'm aware that the hedge may be may have a short life in the future, given possible solutions here. My real focus, though, is to look at what is referred to as the long-term recommendation in the report versus what I think is referred to as a short-term trial. Uh, there was real interest among Coleman Avenue residents, at least, and I would guess Menlo Oaks residents beyond Coleman in a one-way solution. I was a skeptic of that solution because for the last 20 years because the one-way solution never solved the problem of where is the other opposite one-way in the one-way pair. Francesca, your first speaker, uh, said she supported the one-way pair, but Francesca, I'd be very curious what your thought is about which way is the one-way street. That's never been directly assessed. Some of the consultants may have considered it, but my point is that when the trial option was approached of closing Coleman, the Coleman Avenue residents, and I think the broader community, were shocked with pleasure because it seems to be the only solution which is going to deal with, number one, school kid safety, both walking and on bikes, and the only one which is going to reduce through traffic on Coleman Avenue. Now, whether the trial is throughout the day or 24 hours a day, or just one hour in the morning or one after hour in the afternoon, I don't think that's a critical issue. The critical issue is, will kids still be at enormous risk walking and riding their bikes? Uh, I've never gone to Laurel School, but our uh, daughter and son-in-law and their eight-year-old have, and they point out that the most dangerous part of the bike ride to Upper Laurel now is in the city portion of Coleman Avenue. It's just enormously dangerous. So my conclusion is that if we, if we really believe, if you really believe, if the city believes and the county believes, in terms of child safety and bicycle safety, then it seems to me that the short-term trial would be far better, if it works, called a long-term solution, not a short-term solution. Uh, the preferred long-term solution, which is the language in the report, doesn't say whose preference that is. And it doesn't say which of the five or six different objectives are ranked first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. Sometime around November or October, I sent a six page memo to the county representatives expressing my thinking and saying, this is the first time I've realized that what Coleman Avenue should be is a designated school, safe way to school street that doesn't exist in the, in the 
auto engineer, the traffic engineer's lexicon, but it's what Coleman Avenue should be, in my opinion. And the trial closure uh, will probably tell us a great deal about addressing those conflicts. I've been attending most of the meetings and talking to neighbors on a regular basis, but I've never heard anyone talking about what the priority objectives are. The reality is that the five objectives listed in the report you reviewed or you're reviewing today, Mr. There's, Strahan, no there's no priority stated. If you don't mind just wrapping up your, your point, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, the last thing I'll say is something that I hadn't realized. How can a final report be not final? It's baffling to me. Uh, but I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much. Um, our second speaker in here in the evening, uh, Mr. Britt Vaughn uh, Thadden. Apologies Hi. if I mispronounced <clears throat> the name. Hi, Britt Vaughn Thadden, Berkeley Avenue in the uh, Flood Triangle area. Um, and I think what might have been missed a little bit is a number of people in the Flood Triangle on Berkeley <clears throat> use Berkeley in the Menlo Oaks area uh, and then Coleman to avoid traffic on Bay Road. Um, not sure it's an overwhelming amount, but um, that would be probably a huge hindrance to many of those people in that area, um, myself included. Um, next would be some of the puzzling things to me about the the plan. Well, let me start with the good thing. So I think an option of the temporary closure might be a worthwhile process just to take a look at. Um, the one point that might be made in suggestion is uh, depending on the length of time that it's up, would be considered to use a camera to see if it's just temporary barricades, because I would anticipate that people will either blow through it, run it over, or however it's configured. Um, I see people blowing traffic lights every morning when I go to work uh, pretty closely, especially the light at Ringwood, excuse me, at Ravenswood and Middlefield. Um, because that timing with the one at Ringwood and Middlefield is really awkward and people don't like to sit for 30 seconds a minute when they don't see any traffic at all. Um, it seems like an eternity. Um, so that happens pretty frequently. And I would anticipate similar behavior on Coleman. Um, bowl bouts, I think, are not a good idea for cyclists. That was tried 20 years ago on Santa Cruz Avenue um, to much dismay. There was just, they were never officially installed. There were just paint marks. Um, but as an avid cyclist, it made people do a wandering snake move, um, which is very dangerous to students and pedestrians. Uh, a straight line is always a preferred pathway for a bicycle, especially when it needs to interact with vehicles. Uh, and then secondly, as, as uh, Ms. Cole said, the, the change in direction going towards Willow from one side of the street to the other, I think also complicates um, both with high school students they and grade school students, they tend to run in packs. Um, and so this whole thing of switching from one side to the other where there might be traffic um, would just complicate things. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Um, through the chair, if I may, we do have one more public speaker that just raised her virtual hand. Uh, would the chair be entertaining? Okay. Matthew, if you can go ahead and um, allow the public speaker. The next public speaker is Joan. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to be so tardy. I thought there would be more people virtually, but I was wrong. Um, my name is Joan Haritani. I live with my um, 97 year old mom. Um, on Coleman and Arlington were the ones with all the decorations for the holidays. And I just wanted to emphasize, I think what one of the speakers, a couple of the speakers have said, which is, you know, this issue is, is an old one and we've been in the neighborhood for 35 years. And it, it, it came up 20 years ago and it's, it's confounding to me why it's coming up again, because as one of the speakers mentioned, Coleman really is a ghost town except for twice a day when the when and that's just you know during the school year 
um, during the summer, it's super quiet. I live on, you know, again, we live on Coleman and Arlington, so we're very familiar with the area. And so I just wonder why, how, how this became such a hotspot issue. Um, and I also wanted to emphasize the fact that spending $8 million when we can do a pilot for a couple hundred thousand seems to be uh, irresponsible. Everyone in California knows about severe budget cuts and there's just you know, we, we why spend money where it doesn't need to be spent? Why not just look at a pilot and see what, if anything, needs to change? And I would hate for any of the trees to be cut down because that's what attracted us to this neighborhood. I think that's what a lot of the people in the neighborhood fall in love with. Um, we, we go on walks every day. We enjoy the, the sound of the birds. We enjoy the kids walking around and, and the bike people you know, riding their bikes, I ride my bike. Um, and I just hope that we just take a step back and take a deep breath and hope, and just realize that a pilot and just studying how, what the situation is, might be the smartest thing to do rather than jumping into a long-term $8 million solution for a problem that may really be overblown. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, uh, I believe we have no more public speakers. So I return the meeting back to the chair. Thank you, Kevin. Um, all right, I'm uh, open for comments. We are open for comments, I guess. Um, I appreciate all the public comments very much. This is a very complex issue. I actually was present at, I attended the webinar in December. And um, for those who are saying, you know, why are we looking at Coleman so carefully? I think it is because um, it, it has enjoyed increased use and it is a really important corridor for kids. If you look at that first map that was shown, schools everywhere. So, and I know we want to be a community that really um, helps kids feel safe when they're biking and encourage them to do so. So I think for me, uh, just very broadly, I, I think that the, the presentation feels a little to, a bit, to me like two extremes. And I'm confused by that, to be honest, from a policy perspective. Like one is, as discussed, you know, um, $8 million long-term option, you know, install now, um, which uh, has a lot of merit to it, but is expensive. And then on the other hand, there's this um, much less expensive pilot that's completely different, just completely different and doesn't um, contain some of the um, already in use around Menlo Park um, existing measures to make it safer to bike. So, I agree with those who've said um, it seems like a good idea to do a pilot. Six months isn't a very long time, although I agree with the person who said that the timing of the pilot over the summer is probably not the best. Um, but I, I don't really um, care for the pilot in its current form because I think it just misses an opportunity to also test um, uh, several bike um safety measures that we've tested successfully on middle and at the intersection of university and Menlo. And um, I think, I believe at the intersection of um, Willow and Alma and around the city, we've had practice testing uh, the use of different uh, things in pilot form to increase bike safety. So I'm, I feel that that should be incorporated into the pilot. Um. I just wanted to mention, I haven't heard a lot of applause on the Ringwood section, and that's a great deal of money as well. And I know I do, I recognize that a lot of that's coming from the county, but my concern would be is if we move forward with one portion being the pilot in whatever amended form we have, what implications would that then have on Ringwood? So shouldn't we pause Ringwood to first look at Coleman? I guess I'm just a bit concerned that these two issues and two big projects are tied together. Um, I can speak to Ringwood and I don't think we should pause another day. I also know that 
immediately in, you know this too, immediately in county city fundraising project speak means the grants will come through. I mean, the undercrossing at middle is a great example. Like we, it keeps getting kicked down the road another couple of years while we raise money. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's, we're looking at a five-year horizon or something probably. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe, I mean, there's, there's a project that we've been talking about that's been in quasi pilot formation um, up at this, the Alameda since 2017, there have been focus groups working on that and the county is still trying to raise money to put those bike lanes in at the places that very close to where you live. So I'm not worried that we're moving too fast. Um, I also can remember being on the bike commission in 2016 and Jen Wallison, who's now on city council, coming to our meeting and showing us videos of Coleman in 2016 and just being like, why is this acceptable? What are we gonna do about it? And so it's eight years later. And well, I guess I just wanna make sure there's yeah. room for amendments if there are changes on Coleman yeah. or implications in terms of the flooding that people- Yeah, want. I'm sorry, I'm being I'm being more emotional than I mean to be. I just think we've been talking about this for so long. Um, you know, I, as Joan, one of the public commenters mentioned, I'm sure for people in Coleman who want their neighborhood to stay the same or get a little quieter, this feels like the zombie thing that can't, that won't die. You know, like every, every 10 years, it looks like we're going to do something and then people show up and they organize and, and say, please don't, please don't take down, take away our trees. Please don't change our neighborhood. And another generation of kids doesn't get to experience biking to school because their parents don't feel like it's safe enough. And so the minivans go back and forth between upper and lower Laurel and we punt on it for another generation. And I feel like this is the closest we've ever gotten to doing something material. Um, I have a lot of concerns about the pilot. I found myself nodding along with Francesca Segre. Um, I've biked along this road a lot. Um, I've biked with a kid to school, you know, from age five to when he wouldn't let me bike with him anymore. And I'm familiar with some of the challenges and um, I, yeah, I mean, I, sorry, I took notes about things I'm, things I'm worried about. Um, I, I think the person who commented about how the, um, I think it was Jim, how the city section of Coleman is actually more problematic than the county section is, is not wrong. I think that's where a lot of the funky intersections happen. That's where there's on-street parking. And so there's less visibility for people coming out of neighborhoods, um, and I've, I remain disappointed that we don't have better solutions for that segment. Um, the quality of solutions that we've put in place in other parts of our city, like on Middle Avenue, it, it, I'm, I'm disappointed that we've decided that we can't do real bike lanes there as well. Um, and But I also have tried to bike on Coleman, the county section during that 20 minute phase in the morning and in the afternoon. And it's really messy because it's not wide enough right now for people to walk and bike and drive um, in separate little lanes. It's just not. And so what happens instead is you have people kind of weaving in and out um, and it's, it's a mess for those 20 minutes a day, twice a day. Um, and so I do, you know, I, I like the trees too, and I understand the point of them. And, and, um, and we mostly, we are all big fans of them, except when they cause power outages. But I, I do feel like if we can minimize tree loss and we can add separate, especially at least a separate ped facility that little kids could bike on, mm -hmm. if not also the real bike lanes, I, I think that's my personal mm -hmm. preference. And I, I appreciated Meredith calling in and saying she felt like there had been enough outreach to the um, Laurel community about about the pilot, but I don't didn't get a sense from her about whether or not the Laurel parents felt like it was worth trying, and the the people who showed up at the I wonder if the people who showed up at the high school workshop where they got to play around with bike lanes and things like that, if they were looking forward to the idea of having something more robust for their kid. And we're looking at no changes in the city portion, which is sketchy. Are parents going to say, yeah, I'll bike with my kid in that place where I wasn't going to bike with them before because I'm hoping that it'll be a collective action thing and we'll all suddenly decide not to drive. And so then we'll all be able to bike mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like, or, or are we going to have people kind of like looking, cruising around, looking for ways around the blockages or 
I just, I worry about that. Mm -hmm. And, and I agree that there's like a lack of, I don't know how you really simulate this, but a lack of simulation that would give us comfort that, um, the traffic wouldn't just be like water flowing elsewhere, but it would be like gas. And it would, you know, if we narrow the space, um, if you narrow, if you narrow the pathway, then there will be just fewer people driving. I think, I, I think I'm being a little obtuse here, but what I mean is there's this theory of induced demand, which is basically if you remove freeway lanes, it doesn't just compound, make traffic. Um, it doesn't just make things take, take longer. It just, it reduces, people don't like it. And, and so they, they stop driving as much. And so I think the theory here, the best case scenario with this closure is that enough people would say, boy, it's a pain to drive between the Willows and Lower Laurel, especially if now I have to go all the way up to Bay or down to Middlefield, so maybe I'll bike. Like that's that's the theory, right? The theory of action that we're looking at. I just don't know if we know if, I don't know if enough people are gonna adhere, are, are gonna do it that, that it will work and it will be the safe thing that we imagine it will be. And I especially appreciate Francesca mentioning kids coming from much farther away yeah. than the Willows and some of the high school families. Yeah. Um, and I worry about that too, sorry. So I've said a lot and it wasn't super organized, but right now I'm a little skeptical of the pilot and I'm definitely worried about anything that kicks the can further down the road for pursuing grant funding to finally get real bike and pet infrastructure in these places where so many families and kids do use these spaces. And I do think like longer term, if we make it really welcoming and obvious a place to bike and walk, there will be the benefit of less traffic through all of Coleman eventually. Um, but I think we don't get there without providing the obvious indicators that this is where people should do something other than just drive. Um, I'm sorry, I have a clarifying question for Commissioner Marusi. So are you, because uh, you were following on Commissioner King's comment, are you in favor of the Ringwood portion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. let's just clarify. Favor yeah. The Ringwood's, a, Ringwood's a mess right now. And and as, um, oh, who was that? Um, Mr. Abrahamian, I think, yeah. um, mentioned there's there's been no traffic enforced. Or so, sorry, this is one of the things that makes me so angry. And I think Commissioner, former Commissioner Silverstein actually took pictures of it. Every single day when I'm coming down Ringwood, I see cars parked in the no parking section um, and obstructing either yeah. pedestrian or bike throughput or both. And so I love that we're creating a curb that will prevent people from parking over the walkway. And so that I don't have to see that poor woman in her wheelchair wheeling literally down the middle of the street to get around the cars that are, you know, dropping their kids off for football or whatever. Yeah. Ringwood's good. So just to, uh, I have a clarifying question for Christiana and Cameron uh, with regard to something that Commissioner Bruzzi said, because I was also struck by, um, Francesca Segre's uh, comment that she was concerned that uh, closing Coleman would cut down access to the school for students uh, coming up, Will, from maybe East Palo Alto or further away who were coming by car. Uh, was that looked at in the course of gaining feedback? Was there any feedback given about the, obviously, um, the school, Menlo Atherton, serves a very large uh, scope of people geographically. Was there feedback gathered from um parents or students who were coming from East Palo to the high school or from that direction? I believe this um, survey and the webinar was um, advertised to like the Melno Atherton High School um, students, families. Um, but Cameron, if you have anything else you'd like to add. Yeah, I can just add that they were um, a part of all the distribution channels for the various um, events that took place um, in terms of breaking out specific findings for that group. Um, I don't think we are able to really discern that. Um, some of the information in terms of where they live was given voluntarily, um, but we could uh, certainly look into that more. Um, I would also add that uh, conversations were definitely had um, about the um, 
about the pilot and the closure. Um, and there were a lot of, um, you know, important discussions that took place at these events and some community members, as we've heard tonight, um, um, were, were really not in support of the idea. Um, and there were some that, that were in support of the idea. So the, the opinions were definitely um, there and really on both sides of the fence. Okay, thank you. I also have another color friend question and pardon my ignorance, but I want to make sure I understand um, where, how exactly, Cameron, can you describe exactly, because you're an engineer, <laughs> the infrastructure that would be in place that would effectively close off the road? Like what is actually the physical thing that closes it? So design details um, are something that would be looked at and worked oh. through at a, a later stage. Um, okay. The cost estimates that we provided did include, um, you know, design services, um, but really the level of effort that we are putting in right now was focusing more on are people open to the idea and if the design can be worked out, would they be okay with that? And can you clarify, um, would the, would it be open to local traffic? Like as, as said by this, um, one of our members of the public. Um, I live on Berkeley Avenue and I want to go down, you know, Coleman to get to Berkeley. That would not be allowed. Correct. So the way that the pilot has been presented to date is that really all passenger vehicles um, would have to find a different route. Um, so cyclists, pedestrians, transit and emergency vehicles would be accommodated through the closure. Um, passenger vehicles would not. Unless you lived on Coleman? you would have to take a different route to then get to the other side around the closure. So all access to individual properties would be maintained, but particular driving paths might change. Um, okay. And if I may just add a little bit of context to the closure, um, we recently closed off Blake Street uh, near Middle Avenue. If you live off of uh, kind of the Willows, you're more than welcome to maybe drive by yes. uh, Willow and Clover, which is also a street that we have blocked off using temporary measures. So those would be two locations where commissioners are welcome to drive by. And, and those are mo most likely something similar of that regard would be used for as a temporary measure to close off a street. Um, I, I have um, have a few comments. I, I really spent some time thinking on this today, probably more than I needed to. But um, um, first, I am a bike commuter. And in the five plus years that I've been commuting from the Bay to like nearly the Alameda on every school day, um, I've seen amazing improvements across our town in bike infrastructure. But this corridor is absolutely the most treacherous one on my bike commute. It is the one that I'm nervous about every single day on my way to school and every single day on my way home. And I am, I'm with all the other people who have been nearly hit. Like I would say if there aren't more accidents, it's because like bicyclists are more careful than cars because if I were not a more defensive cyclist, we'd have more. So like, not just for me, I'm just saying, <laughs> bicyclists have to be more defensive. That's why if we don't have any, I don't think it should take a tragedy to do something. Um, one of the things that I was digging into today is like California, our, our, in our state history museum, claims to be the first, the world's first auto civilization. No form of transportation, according to the State Museum, has had a greater impact on shaping the landscape of the Golden State than the automobile. Um, we have built and expanded a lot of roadways since the first congestion concerns of the 1930s and then the 60s and the 70s and the 90s and the 2000s. Like widening roadways for cars and making cars move faster isn't solving congestion. Um, our roadway design is car-centered, and as long as we keep it car-centered, 
I think we're going to continue to have these problems. Um, we like, I think it's time to start planning around other road users and considering planning that prioritizes the health and safety of our residents as they begin using other modes of travel to get around our small, relatively flat city with a blissfully temperate climate and um, lots of cars. We've heard from multiple forums and multiple public outreach about safety concerns of bikes on roadways. We have seen parents who like don't let their kids bike to school because it doesn't feel safe. We also know research says that biking to school and taking the bus to school are great ways for kids to start growing their independence. Like these are things that we should value. Um, so uh, to that end, I would say like, first I wanna applaud all of the time and energy given by the stakeholders who came to all these meetings and all of the local residents who showed up to the meetings and the hundreds of people who filled out surveys. Um, I value all that input and I really appreciate it. Um, but I do think that it's time as a city that we take a more thoughtful look to how we're providing visible and meaningful access to other road users who aren't in cars. And that means that like, so anyway, that is like the longer version of the mm -hmm. comments. I'm fully in support of both long-term projects. One of the things that I see every single day on my ride down Ringwood is cars either parked in the bike lane just because they can. And in six years of bike commuting, I've never seen anyone get a ticket. It just is what we do. Um, and also I've had them just pull over right in front of me in the bike lane to pick up high school kids. So we need raised barriers to protect the bike lanes. And, um, I think it's time to do those things. Now, one of the questions that I had was if we did, so I, I'm not totally clear on how the closure of Coleman in the county section like, how does that go with the long-term plan for Coleman? Because they seem to sort of be there because the long-term plan for Coleman seems to show cars and the short-term pilot would not show cars. And so those, those things seem confusing to me. Um, and uh, also the comment that came up about what kids were going to do when the buses came down the street is a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, especially if we're not making any other change to the street. Right. So I'm not in favor of yes. making no changes to the street. Um, and I'm not in favor of only closing it and then making no changes. Um, so then I'm open to any other motions anyone wants to make. Uh, I do have a clarifying question um, to Cameron and and Christian, based on the uh, public comments, there were. I just want to acknowledge there were quite a few public commenters who said um, that Coleman is very busy only during specific times of day. So I wanted to ask if you could speak to the question of um, were was it why not um, like what were the reasons that it, it doesn't make sense in your view to apply different solutions or approaches at different times of day on a road like Coleman. So I think one of the pilot options we looked at was just restricting turning movements um, during the peak hours onto um, Coleman. And um, that was that was one that I think the community um, did not favor, at least based on the survey and the webinar that was held. And um, and that's also just a lot of that is enforcement um, because it will, you know, we won't we can't prohibit the right turns because it's only during we can't physically prohibit the right turns because it's, you know, just during peak periods. Um, so, and then I think from a closure perspective, just doing it during a peak period is very confusing for a driver. Like if you're not familiar with the area, you won't know when it's, you know, when is it acceptable? And then how do you actually physically close it just during a peak period time? It would also be signs. And then you have to, design it for normal two-way traffic um, during the, the non-peak times. Cameron, did you want to speak to that or is that? 
Yeah, so uh, the, the two main issues that we heard as part of the um, community engagement on a time of day solution of some kind was uh, confusion and the potential creation of new issues people turning the wrong way, driving the wrong way during certain times. Um, and then enforcement was was really the other big one that was a concern for the community. Whereas if something is done on a more permanent level, then you can do some physical restrictions of those uh, travel. So th those were the two um, concerns within the community. Okay. Um, and Cameron, was there, when you were considering options for a pilot, was there a pilot design considered um, that, you know, potentially closed the road, but also uh, piloted things to um, enhance bike safety for, let's say, you know, our hypothetical that little kids are biking down the street and there's really no directional guidance for them, whether that's a bike lane with bollards or something painted or uh, um, were any of these additional things considered? So um, the pilot option, so the pilot options that were considered were the temporary um, turn restrictions. Then we had the one-way street option, and then we had the road closure to no through traffic, the, the preferred option. And then the fourth one was traffic homing only. So the four of those were presented to the community, and then it was also discussed that the traffic calming option could also be kind of like another layer on one of these al other alternatives. So that could be combined with one of the other three to create some form of different alternative. In terms of bike safety, um, the addition of um, like signage, potentially some striping could also be incorporated into a pilot. Something more along the lines of like new bike lanes, for example, um, within the city section that could be done with like a piloting um, a, a park and removal on one side of the street. In the county section, though, you don't really have the option to pilot something new in terms of a path or um, bike lanes because that physical streetscape isn't there currently. Um, and then you have the issue of weeding into tree removal and things like that, which was um, a concern with the longer term design alternatives. Okay. So for example, in the pilot currently would, could we consider something like the pilot with, just give you one example, the always stop piloted at Santa Monica. Yes, the always stop can be um, added and that could be just done even separately from the pilot as well. There you go. Okay. So I think, I think it's interesting as you just talked us through for the folks who weren't on the webinar, and that was a good refresh for me, the way those four options were presented at the webinar, the traffic calming was separate and apart from closure. And now we're thinking, you know, could you layer one on top of the other and make the pilot more robust? Um, I do, I, it, I don't know about the entire commission, but I think a couple of us have maybe are seeing an opportunity for a pilot that uh, also um, uses uh, the city's time and $200,000 well by uh, piloting um, some other things like bike lanes or, or the stop um, and, and more directionality. Um, it, what you just said about the county, and I appreciate that this whole time you, you've been working with a very complex situation and part of the road is county and part of the road is city um, that must, be really challenging from a design perspective and a use perspective. But I think what you just said was that one of the reasons that we couldn't necessarily pilot something like bike lanes on um, the county side was because of the community's um, objection to, I think you said was was tree removal. Is that the only reason? Is because of of existing trees that you could we couldn't as, it, as there's no design alternative on the county side for striping in bike lanes. So I think that it's, it, the big thing is there's not enough roadway width to um, pilot like a, a bike lane without the- I know, think Jim longer. said he was he was willing to give up his hedges <laughs> moments ago, but um, so that, so you're saying there's not enough roadway width without removal of trees. Is that, is that the- 
Yeah, yes, because that that's why we came up with this pilot option because of the concern about the tree removals. And how many trees was it on the county side? Cameron, do you have that number offhand? Yes, and they I were... do. Um, okay, so I mean, keep in mind, this is an estimate at this point and would obviously highly depend on final design, but um, up to 19 is, is what we estimated. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. And, and, that, and that was correct about not being able to pilot the bike lane alternative because it would actually require roadway widening and construction. Um, one of the pilots, though, was the one-way street in which case you would eliminate one of the existing travel lanes and then you would repurpose that space towards um, a, essentially a shared use facility um, within the street where pedestrians and cyclists could use that. So that was one of the pilot options. Did everyone get that? Can you repeat yeah. that, Cameron? I just want to really get that. Did you say one-way street on the county side? Yes. A one-way street within the county was one of the pilot options that was um, considered. So following up on that, I know this wasn't the preferred alternative, but I, um, one of our commenters asked, asked uh, what I think was a non-rhetorical question of what's the hypothesis about how people come back. So if people are driving from the Willows in the morning to Lower Laurel with the minivan full of kids, and then they are returning, or maybe they're going on their merry way, but what's What's our, are we expecting traffic would then, I don't know, they would take Colby and sort of weave back through the neighborhood or they go all the way up to Bay or down to Middlefield or what do we think? All of the above. <laughs> I, I okay. think that, that trying to gauge that is one of the reasons that it is proposed as a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really is um, a, a guessing um you know, effort to try to see where people are going to go and how much people are going to go, because part of the equation is traffic will be diverted. We know that we yeah. don't know exactly how much. The other thing is we are we would be hopeful that increased um, cyclists would now be riding to school or work or other places. So there would be some combination of that. The pilot provides an opportunity to actually do some studies, um, get some data before, get some data after, and really then be able to make a, a more informed decision on whether or not the pilot is doing what we thought it might do. Mm -hmm. I just want to raise this point again for the record, I still don't quite understand how your theory of change is meant to work if the part that you're putting a pilot into is the part that parents aren't seeing as the most dangerous section. So in other words, if you're not changing the city at all, except maybe throwing up like a rubber speed bump or something, <laughs> um, then I, I feel like maybe you get 5% uptake or something like that, just randomly spitballing here of parents who are like, yeah, I'm willing to try that, but I don't see how, I don't, I don't know if that would make a material difference. And I guess that the point of a pilot is to find out. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about that. And I also want to draw attention to the fact that there's not enough hardscape in the county section right now to even fit a regulation width bike lane on right. either side of on both sides of the road. And I want us to think through what that means. If there's not enough hardscape for there to be proper bike lanes, that means that people who are biking in there or walking right now alongside buses and other vehicles really don't have any options. Right. No, I mean, if you, so if, other if than you, taking the lane. Yeah, if you or, close a road, yeah. uh, if you close the road yeah. and um, on the county side, a bus comes along, you're off the road. The bus, bus, yeah, or the bus the bus well, goes into the other lane or something. Yeah, yeah. And my, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, by implication that, or sorry, inference that, um, the reason it requires, excuse me, the reason it re requires tree removal is because that sidescape, sorry, the side portion that's not hardscape on the county side has trees. Okay, it's not like it's just dirt and we. Okay, it's trees. Um, well, I, I mean, I, other people think this is a good exercise, but I, I defer to my commissioners. Um, 
I would like to see the slide again with the long-term solutions and see if there are elements, um, calming or, or safety, safety elements in there that we believe should be included in the pilot. Um, because I don't want to assume that I'm keeping them all in my head. I would prefer to see the illustration again, if that's okay. Yes. If anyone disagrees, please. I don't want to go down a path that people don't want to go down. Uh, while Christine pull up the slides, uh, for those that have a laptop or a printout of the report, you can also reference, uh, there's a couple of pages where the traffic comings have been illustrated. So on page uh, six, of the report and then page seven of the uh, WTRANS report, there are some images of traffic comings for Coleman and, um, and Coleman. Um, um, go ahead, please. Hang on, I just have a quick question. Is it okay if I step down and get a drink of water? Do we not have to pause the meeting for that, right? Of course, yeah. Okay, good. And um, can I just- um, Please, yeah. I don't, I'm a little confused about the pilot and the long-term project and how that sort of like, I, I think the problem is I think that one of them is just meant to hold, to do something while the long-term project is getting done. And um, maybe that is a misunderstanding on my part, that even after the long-term project is done, would that road closure remain? Like, um, I'm just confused by that. Part of it, or is that something? So I think I think that there's could be multiple options, right? After the pilot, after we do the pilot, there could be a a, a potential where um, the city and the county want to keep the pilot and make it more permanent, um, and then and not do the long term. I mean, like we would do more of a long term design of the pilot closure as opposed to this the design alternative that we are calling long term now. Um, or it could be that the pilot doesn't work. We could go back and say, we want to do, you know, the long-term design option that's shown. And so if we chose the long-term pilot, what, what does that mean long-term? Like, so for how long will it continue to look mostly like it does right now? Do we think like this, this these are the things I don't totally understand. Uh, do, do you mean when you say long-term pilot, you mean like if we chose that that would be the... Sorry, not the long-term pilot. If we chose the long-term option that included the multi-use path along the side, if that was the thing that we decided, what what would sort of, what would be the immediate change like on Coleman? For, for, would anything change right now or would all of that be in a couple of years or so there could be um some short-term options like installing the traffic calming um first and um the always stop sign as well um and i'm just talking about the city portion <laughs> um and then you know depending on what the council decides um we could pursue then um funding for the long-term option if that was um the the decision Okay, I'm just taking, sure, you go get water, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna take a moment to um, watch my thoughts, one second. <clears throat> um, okay. Question, on the county side, is there currently no parking on either side? I think there is some um the parking restrictions during you know like the school hours. Okay, uh, during school hours, no parking either side in school on school hours only. Okay. Okay. One second. Circles. Okay. Uh, another clarifying question. <laughs> Traffic circles. It was mentioned in the long term plan on the county side. Something about enhancing traffic circles. Can someone tell me what that was? What, what that meant exactly? I'll ask Cameron to uh, respond to that. Yeah, yeah, happy to take this one. Uh, so there are existing kind of mini neighborhood traffic circles at um, three intersections on the county side. Um, 
and it, it was identified through community engagement that it was important to the community to retain those. Um, so some of the um, some of the improvements we looked at were really enhancing those via additional signing and striping and looking to kind of create some deflection on the approaches um, to those intersections. So like a, a perhaps some color uh, treatment or some additional striping where you're really trying to deflect the, the path of the vehicle to uh, slow speeds down. So really just trying to enhance those circles um, to get some greater traffic calming benefits and, and keep those in place. Right now, do they have any like, um, you know, what's the word, like reflective signage at yeah. all? Um, so um, there are there are some raised pavement markers out there currently, um, a little like bot dots, um, and, and the oh. treatments are inconsistent at each one of those um, oh. circles. So it is a little bit different. Well, that sounds like an obvious one to me. Maybe, maybe if that's not too expensive. Okay. So what I would suggest is do other commissioners, I have a couple of ideas about if we go the route of doing a pilot and testing the idea of um, closing the road, which we agree would result in a huge reduction in traffic, but some of us think that, you know, that more could be done aside from that to increase safety. Um, I have a couple of ideas about some elements of the, of the long-term solutions that could be piloted in the pilot. So does anyone have, before I begin or talk, I've, I've talked a lot tonight. I want to make sure that other commissioners, if you have ideas around this, that you can maybe go first or does anyone have any thoughts around this or Katie, do you have any ideas about things that you might want to pull in or. I mean, we're going to break this into two pieces and say, you know, our recommendation is to go forward yeah. with Ringwood yeah. uh, and because I, I have a few amendments I think that need to be considered on that issue along. On Ringwood. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, do you want to address that first and then get back to my idea? Okay. Let's just address Ringwood first. Okay. Because um, the okay. Ringwood policy presentation is far briefer than that. Of Sorry, Coleman. Commissioner King, if you don't mind, just speak into the mic real quick, sir, just for the benefit of the Zoom, oh, sir. Zoom users. Yeah. Um, listening to our community uh, speak today, it seems as though, um, and referencing uh, the presentation, I've mentioned that the Ringwood portion is far uh, smaller than that of Coleman. And I think if you can add in, which I don't see in here, um, the concerns about turn restrictions on Ringwood during um, hours, so, uh, I think notably it's that left in MA. And um, also uh, consider uh, flood alternatives uh, and uh, mediation when I don't see that anywhere in there. If those could be addressed. That's all I had. Uh, my apologies. So I, I picked up restrict left turn from Ringwood to MA. So I assume that's that would be the yeah, eastbound Ringwood is, to MA. And I'd love my, the commission's feedback on that. But this is what I'm hearing from our community calling in were these uh, points that don't seem to be addressed in this write-up. So we have the question is with the direct with the travel coming from Middlefield towards Menlo Hatherton, are vehicles going to be permitted to turn left through all this traffic calming? Wait, from Middlefield onto Ringwood? No, once you're on Ringwood. Oh. If you're facing Bay at the very end, but you're at MA. Yeah. Can you turn left? Yeah, R right now you can. Two locations? I think so, into the two parking lots. Um, I know they make it easy when you're facing middle or up middle field, you can exit to the right. I looked at one of them. I don't think, I don't think so. And uh, somebody from staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think right now there's no, I think the driveways are still driveways and there's nothing in the middle of the road that prevents you from turning left into them. I'm wondering, I was going to ask if we had, I'm sure we probably don't, but this again is like a peak period phenomenon of a whole bunch of kids in cars and probably parents dropping kids off, turning at the same time of day into the high school parking lot, actually both high school parking lots. Do we have any sense of like vehicular counts or, you know, like turning counts at those locations? Um, I agree that's really, really dangerous. Um, 
And also I wonder, practically speaking, what the implication would be of restricting those turns. Like where would, like, does that send everybody down Oak Grove then into the parking lot on the Oak Grove side, which means they're not turning left, but is that, Perhaps is that an acceptable? that can get addressed. Because yeah. It's yeah. Not even outlined. Let's, yeah. Let's, so, so it'd be cool to evaluate what that impact of that would be. Like what I think you're saying, <clears throat> What I, one thing I don't know in answering it is if that lot that people are turning left into that's right after you leave Middlefield, is that the only place where students park? So like if, if students can park in either place, then I know that you can, there's, I commonly see drop off at the second parking lot too. So if you're coming from Middlefield and you're a parent dropping off a kid, you can still loop through the parking mm -hmm. lot that's further down the way by the field. So there's still a place that you can go and drop your kid off from Ringwood with, with a left turn, it, unless we limit that. And then, but the question is, if that one lot, like do we limit student parking to that one lot, in which case students would be needing to access that lot? And they would have to use Oak Grove. I have no idea. And I think this is a conversation with the school. And sure. yeah, it, worth looking into worth for sure. Worth looking into. Yeah, worth I like that. Into, as is um, flood mediation. Two, two of our callers addressed that on that street. Who yeah, the drainage issues. Yes. yes. And then if I may just get clarification on the second point. So the second point was the drainage issue? Exactly. Got it. Okay, thank you. Actually, let's let's formally put in our recommendation if we wouldn't mind um, addressing um, Mr. Ibrahimian's uh, comment about you know what good are the bike lanes if people are still ignoring the no parking signs, which we also see right now in middle. Um, <laughs> and so um, I, I'm deeply familiar with the weird Bermuda's triangle. It, it turns out it's like CHP that's apparently responsible for enforcing that. But if we, uh, if in the process, if we're going to spend a whole lot of money um, and community goodwill getting better bike facilities and ped facilities on this road, let's also come to a better arrangement with our enforcement community about not ignoring it. I called the sheriff and was told that it was actually CHP. But anyway, I think I'm not supposed to have dialogue with public commenters. Sorry. <laughs> so, Kevin, I think those are our three points on Ringwood. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, so if there's a third point. Oh, enforcement. Enforcement. En Got enforcement. it. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and there should be a carrot option as well. So the, one of the reasons you see people parking along Greenwood right now is because they're taking their kids to Pop Warner football, they're going to games, they're going to, and, and I think having, um, adding things like signage that show people where they can park, which would usually be all of the empty lots after hours at MA, um, and directing them there so, because this is going to be a big behavior change for them. And maybe even getting that behavior change going before we build the hardscape would be a good thing. Do we? Kevin, can we do that? Can we vote separately on to move forward with those amendments on Ringwood? Uh, we certainly could. I mean, um, I, I think so. I, to facilitate. If, yeah. <laughs> You're asking. So when I was looking at the preferred alternative for Ringwood, um, it has the walking path. I don't know what page. There was this plate, it's Ringwood Avenue, wherever plate 12 is. Ah, 
So the walking path, the bus bay. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting at the people who are going to pull over in the bike lane and park to drop off their kids. This bus bay thing, is that just the small bulb out for a bus that's in front of MA? And, and, and otherwise, absent that small bulb out for the bus, the rest of the street, is that just going to be a bike lane and a travel lane that cars are going to pull over and park in? Or is there going to be a raised barrier just like on the other side? Oh, but you can't because of the bus. So that's what I'm confused about. The If the bus bay doesn't extend the whole way, can there be a raised barrier between the travel lane and the bike lane on both sides of the road? So um, that's correct. The cross section that you're looking at here is just immediately in front of the high school where there is a bus bay. So where that bus bay does not exist, then you would just have your traditional class two bike lane next to the travel lane. Um, uh, so the protected bike lane is only in on the left side of the screen here. So on the school frontage, not on the opposite side of the street going um, towards Bay because that would require roadway widening. And then there were associated um, impacts with that in terms of trees, encroachments, utility poles, et cetera. So um, the, with the preferred option here, the protected bike lanes would only be um, on the left side. Then whatever motion we make, I think having learned from middle, um, we need a lot of signs and enforcement, but they're going to need to be a lot of signs so that you cannot park anywhere on that street without seeing a sign that says you cannot park anywhere on that street. Those signs actually already exist. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> they're just not. Yes. Uh, but enforce you enforcement is everything. And that has been non-existent in all of my years of riding down that road. Maybe signs at eye level. <laughs> I've, no joke. I've seen this before, right? Signs that are half height versus those eight foot tall signs. Mm -hmm. okay. Kevin, I had a question, uh, or maybe Cameron can, can answer this. Does raised separation device is that are we talking about something that's like over at Drager's or are we talking about a small armadillo because perhaps the small armadillos could uh or turtles I'm not sure what the right terminology is would be appropriate on that bus bay side all the way down as protection and a deterrence against parking so there's no specific device um you know decided at this point but I think there's not enough space on the um, on the other side of the street, even for um, any type any type of um, equipment. Um, you know, whether it's the armadillo or a post, you still need about the same amount of width. Liz, do you want to put it together, the three things? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, if we can put a forth a motion to move forward with the Ringwood proposal um, with addressing the three uh, concerns of enforcement, left turn restrictions, and mitigation uh, for flooding and drainage, uh, I would like to put forth that proposal. I'll second that. Hey, great. Um, so, and just to clarify a couple of things, you know, obviously Ringwood, most of Ringwood is in the county right away. So the city, we don't ultimately have the, the final say so. Um, and I think for the, uh, the Ringwood to MA restriction, I think that's certainly something that we can evaluate. Um, but, but we do want to keep in mind that that's, uh, our guarantee is that we'll evaluate it, but we're not guaranteeing that it can be done. Right. So just wanted to keep that in mind. So with that, um, for those, so we do have a motion and a second, a motion by Commissioner King, second by Commissioner Baruzzi. For those like, that would like to vote yes to the uh, motion, if you please raise your hands. I'm seeing unanimous, unanimous votes. Great, thank you. Uh, we can move on to Coleman. Um, Kevin, can I make one comment on that? I, I, it, it really is true that um, at certain times of day, that, that high school left turn causes 
a backup out of the left turn lane on middle field that that causes some cra pretty crazy driving behavior um, and some safety issues sort of downstream. Mm -hmm. And so if there is a way to figure out how to resolve that circulation challenge, I think it's more than just about like, you know, cutting off cyclists or hitting people. It's, it's a bigger issue. It's it, issues with the crosswalk across from MA. It causes, um, it, it causes some funkiness and a lot of, and then it also causes drivers to divert into the bike lane to come around them. Um, so I, I would love to see that studied, um, and improved. Uh, Kevin, what is the process given this ownership of most of that road by the county? What is the process of making the county aware of um, the additional, you know, interest by on the behalf of this commission to uh, look at those three issues? For example, let's say we all approve the motion, and then it goes to city council, and city council is aware the commission wanted more work on these issues. Um, how does this county get looped in? So the project is being done in partnership with the county. So we're um, um, having regular meetings and okay. you know sh sharing about. And I, I believe someone from the county is actually on the Zoom call. Um, so you know, right. listening in. So we Thank they you. definitely have a correspondence. Thank you. Vote Coleman. Oh, do we vote? Everything's yeah. fine. Everything's fine. Okay, good. Coleman. Okay. I was, <laughs> I'm going to puppeteer right behind me. Um, okay. So could, would you mind putting up the slide quickly that shows the pilot of Coleman? All right. Coleman pilot is a road closure, no tree removal or pavement watering, no parking removed, no new pedestrian bike. Okay. Um, Great. So just for us to all have a level set, because it's a complicated evening, lots of issues, lots of places. Um, second bullet point here, lower vehicle volumes on Coleman increases ped bike comfort, in my opinion, is the is the um, rationale for this pilot option. Um, and because the, the belief is that these lower vehicle volumes will increase comfort to such an extent that maybe other measures wouldn't be additionally piloted, like pedestrian bike facilities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now if we can go back to the city, um, what you just had up, which is the city portion of the long-term, thank you so much, design alternative. So question, I just have a few questions about what you and Cameron um, think might be the merit of adding additional things to the pilot. And I guess I just start with uh, your last bullet point there, which is new way, new always stop controls. Um, having been on the webinar and having lived on Berkeley Avenue uh, back in the day, um, I did think it was a good idea to uh, do a stop, always stop at Santa Monica. So my question is, is that something that can just be um, entertained as a proposal outside of the pilot or as part of the pilot? Do, do you to see merit in that? Yes, um, you can do either, either one. Um, and we have, um, had a lot of um, discussion about putting always stops at Santa Monica and Coleman. So it's definitely not something new. And I think um, the council has um, expressed the interest in putting always stops there too in the past. And in the um, community outreach, there was support or? Um, I'm you, not you, sure if we heard anything in particular about okay. the always stop. Okay. So that's one of my ideas, throwing it out there. Um, second. So, um, just a second, I have to look at all my things. Yes, okay. Um, did you consider uh, in the pilot, since it's only six months, piloting the removal of parking on one side? I have not been privy to all the feedback that you've gotten, but I did note tonight that the only we only got one public comment on what someone thought would be um, the difficulty to residents if parking was removed. So I'm curious if this is potentially an opportunity to test whether removing parking on one side, if it's not problematic during the pilot, you know, do you have more options for how you use what Commissioner Bruzzi described as the more difficult portion of the road, the city road, to create more space for bikers. You could potentially do like a raised shared use path, right? And 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 improve that aspect for pedestrians and, and bikers and small kids. So I wondered about that. 
I don't believe the parking removal was considered as part of the pilot. We didn't present it as that as an option, but that could be something the commission could recommend if they choose. Okay. Would is is what you're saying like if you removed parking as part of the pilot and treated that as a starter multi-use path? Well, I, th I think, okay, that's a good question. Um, I thought it might be too complicated to test it as a multi-use path in addition to removing the parking. I was thinking you remove the parking, maybe you move the striping, Right. And you just have more room because there's still sidewalks. So people will still be able to walk. But the mm -hmm. question is, I guess for me, um, parking like is such a thing. Um, I would want to make sure like if we're taking parking away, mm -hmm. I would want to make sure that there is a like visible thing that says we have to remove parking so that we can do this thing. Mm -hmm. by That's lanes, a good point. Right. That's a good versus point. like we have to remove parking because we need some more wiggle room. And then they and then they feel like they've given up parking and they're not really seeing a visible a benefit. change. I guess I was thinking that it would be a way to make this to test whether the city side could accommodate the parking removal so that when, as we talked about, kids or people or bike, you know, are walking up and down that side, that that part of the road, the city side, there is more protected bike lanes and safety and discrete spaces for people um, when the emergency vehicles and the bus, big buses and everything come pouring on down. If people like the way that feels, it may even, you know, provoke or initiate changes on the county side that works out well. But if that's, or, you know, again, we could go to yours, which is remove the parking and test a shared path. I I, I like, I, I mean, it's an, inter it's an idea I hadn't thought of, but mm -hmm. like, in the while you're waiting to get to sort of this long-term design where you might have um, especially if there's some pushback against expanding the pavement that essentially taking away that parking and trying to use that instead of turning it into a parklet you would turn it into a mm -hmm. bike lane mm -hmm. but but like two-way bike lane kind of in that section is there room to put two-way bike lane in a parking in a in the width of parking? I don't okay. think we have enough room to do that. So yeah, I, I can I can jump in here. Um, so the parking lane is about eight feet wide. Um, and one of the longer term design alternatives that was considered is removal of parking on one side of the street and then repurposing that space towards uh, class two bike lanes. Um, so that would be one bike lane in each direction. But those bike lanes would be relatively narrow, around four feet. Um, and so that alternative was not viewed as um, as desirable by the community because of those substandard bike lanes. So there is there would not be space to really test a two-way bike facility within the parking lane because in addition to the space for the pathway, you would also need a buffer space between the bike facility and the adjacent travel lane because you'd be in a situation where you'd have contra flow cyclists and vehicles riding next to each other so you'd like about a three-foot buffer there or some sort of raised element to separate that space okay i i got it and i think um actually you don't you wouldn't need two-way bike travel in that bike lane because um to everybody's point um it's it's very commute centric. So in the morning, most of that traffic's going one way and the traffic that's going the other way are probably capable of using the Sharrows lane, right? The other way, just like they currently do. And then in the afternoon, that bike traffic's going to be going home. So I think it would be um, commute direction bike traffic. And that way there would be a place for the kids to ride. So anyway, that's a thought in terms of... Um, but yes, the cross crossing the road. Yes. I think it's a little more complicated because there are kids coming from other neighborhoods going to Upper Laurel and using Coleman. And so, and there's also the international school. school. And yep. yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's not quite as, okay. as simple as that. That's straightforward. I think I was j just trying to understand if there was, 
again, you, using the city's time well, the community's time well, every, everything and the money, um, is there some other things we can test within the pilot that would be useful from a design perspective? I'm not saying I have, a, have all the answers. Um, so Cameron, from a design and engineering perspective, if we do the pilot um, and we don't remove uh, parking on one side just to test it, um, how do you feel comfortable with the experience of like young kids biking uh, when the street is in use by the vehicles that are permitted to use it, like during busy school hours? Uh, the, at that point, they're just moving to the side of the road and is there enough room for them? Or do you feel like painting bike lanes or putting bollards down or anything like that for bike lanes during the pilot would be um, safety enhancing? Yeah, so I think that um, what you described is the existing condition, right? That, that's what they currently do. Um, so there are some other features I think that could be worked into a pilot, um, such as some um, enhanced pavement markings, right? I think we've all seen the sharrows. Um, we could also look at the greenback sharrows that um, are a traditional sharrow marking on a, a green square for some enhanced visibility. I also think um, the bulb out options um, that were a part of the longer term design alternative, there's some lower cost materials that can be used in terms of flexible bollards, posts, things like that. Um, to try to narrow the feel of the street and really slow vehicle speeds down. Um, and then there would also be some, some signing measures um, in addition to uh, the traffic calming options that we discussed earlier. Um, rubberized uh, speed humps, speed tables, things like that. Um, we did get input from the fire department on and uh, they were okay with. So um, there are some lower cost temporary uh, materials that could be worked in uh, to the pilot as well. And do you think, would you favor those? I looked at that and I thought, well, if the traffic is reduced so greatly, maybe you don't need to have steep speed tables, et cetera. But do you think that it would be useful to test um, pumps and the things that were less expensive? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, there could be some potential within the pilot to um, potentially phase it. Um, you could start with the closure, um, see how that works. You can implement some additional measures and you can kind of keep taking it uh, as far as you need to. Um, that could be one potential way to look at it. Um, I think that uh, one of the underlying um, takeaways really throughout the entire study effort is that there is strong support from the community on both Coleman and Ringwood for traffic calming in general. So yeah. um, generally the measures that were discussed um, mm -hmm. and, there, and there were many um, were, were well supported by the community. So that was an underlying theme. Okay, well maybe it could, uh, Katie, excuse me, Commissioner Bruzzi, did you have something to say? Well, yeah, I was wondering, I was trying to remember what this weird design was and I'm sure this won't fly in Menlo Park but I have to put it out there. What about the sort of Dutch suggestion lane thing where you, do you know what I'm talking about? Where you basically have different colored pavement bike lanes on each side, but there's not, there's a substandard middle width that drivers share when they're passing bikes. And this has been piloted in different places in the US as well. Um, I'm getting blanks. So do you mean that with the road closure? Because I'm not sure if the volume on Coleman today would make sense to do something like that. Um, I think I need to do more research on this yeah. one, but it's it's basically, it's a solution for suburban areas where you don't have enough hardscape to do two car lanes and two bike lanes in each direction. And normally what happens is we say, well, screw the bikes, we'll just have the car lanes. And this is kind of novel because basically they lead with the bike, like the there, there are bike lanes on each side and then there's a center channel and people kind of, you know, drive in that center channel when they need to pass a bike um, and then move back into their space. And it sounds crazy, but apparently it works. Um, Interesting. Well, maybe that, maybe that can lead to a potential, I can build on that lead up potential motion, maybe a motion, something along the lines of, that we approve, um, you know, we recommend or what it's a recommend <laughs> the pilot um, 
this design alternative for six months with the um, um, putting, installing separately and apart from the pilot, installing of Always Stop at Santa Monica and asking the team to go back and um, consider a phased a pilot where additional traffic calming measures are added as, as you go. Um, and that could include uh, speed tables, it could include humps. I apologize, I did not drive down Coleman today for a couple of different family things that took me away from doing that. Um, but I'm not quite sure, Katie, you can help here, and, and uh, Jackie, I'm not quite sure currently what it looks like from a biker's perspective on the city side. Are there painted lanes? Are there relatives? There's nothing. Okay. So as part of my motion, I would say, um, in my motion, would say, I mean, if you agree, um, to prioritize on the early side of the pilot, maybe even in the rollout, um, testing in the pilot phase either painted bike lanes or bollards or something to offer increased protection for um, bikers. And the reason I say that in part, by the way, is when we first started talking about this pilot, one of my concerns is that I'm a kid and now I'm like, no cars on, no cars on Coleman. This is great. And I just start biking all over the place on Coleman. Um, and I don't want necessarily to like encourage that behavior when we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, maybe have them do that on other streets. I, I think it would be better if we were super clear directionally that bike lanes are on typically on the side um, and to the extent they can stay within them, that would be great um, because it, you know, I think, I think that would just be good um, education, my opinion, but you might disagree. The bikers might disagree. Uh, before we get all into the rest of the motion, I'm going to chime in and say that Personally, I am in favor of both long-term design alternatives that include a really, um, a, like the, I love the multi-use path on the side. Yeah. I love a way to make it easier for young bikers, like that it's a, a really visible mm -hmm. value of multimodal users of the road. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to support whatever half measure we decide to take today. If it's not complete support of those long-term designs, but I, I'm, I'm not sure how many half measures I'm going to be totally comfortable with. Did you, did you think that the removing parking on one side and allowing us to test the shared path would, would be useful? Yes, because uh, yes. Uh, I, I mean, ideally I want, but, Yes, I would be in support of kind of trying out removing parking and then treating that as kind of a shared path. And then with the expectation that the more experienced cyclists can share, oh, just like is, is in, because it's a way of kind of testing out what I think is the long-term design where that shared use path would be off to the side. Um, so yes. And it yeah. also, um, begins the process of, um, making roadways not quite so devoted to cars and um i'm in favor of that after wait decades. i'm confused i thought we just heard that you can't remove a lane of parking and have a bi-directional shared use path even as a pilot am i did i miss a beat i might have i'm getting tired yes that's correct i i think um that's we'd correct. need clarification on if you're removing one side of the parking would we just be putting in some kind of a bike lane there that would be marked for one direction? We wouldn't be able to pilot a shared use path just because there's not enough space. Um, the shared use path would happen because they'd all be on the same level. But the fact that, you know, part of the, when we remove parking, it will just be at street level. So we can't consider that a shared path. So I guess the motion, and I don't know if others support it, would be to proceed with the pilot, but um, separate apart from it, install a stop sign, always stop at Santa Monica. And as part of the pilot, uh, include um, piloting ways to uh, provide more protection and comfort to the bikers through, you know, bollards or painted bike lanes, and also to consider and potentially phase in other traffic calming measures, including speed tables and um, humps. Um, do people uh, 
like this or disagree, I'd love to, I'm just putting a straw man on the table for us to. I think a pilot I could get behind would be, so I, I Googled quickly. I think what I'm thinking about are called advisory bike lanes. Um, and I could see something like advisory bike lanes being a fairly straightforward pilot on the existing hardscape in the county section. And actually we don't have a center line on Coleman in the city section, right? So maybe that could work, but it also feels like a pretty big, it's kind of like trying to introduce a roundabout to people who've never driven a roundabout before. It might be, it might be asking too much, um, uh, I don't know, critical thinking or different kinds of thinking from drivers. Uh, but but I don't see how we can do the, I, I love the idea of piloting bike lanes. I just don't see how it works um, because there's no place to put them, right? And then maybe I misunderstood you, Sally. I'm assuming there is a place to put them because they're saying there's a place for people to bike. <laughs> there's not. Nope. So, so why don't, I'm, I know we're going late and, but this is a big one, right? This is, a, you guys have worked on this <laughs> road for a very long time and we take it seriously. Um, so why not try pilot removing parking and at least just widen the street to the extent to make, create bike lanes then? I mean, like painted bike lanes. It's, it seems like we're getting a lot into design from, I'm just wondering how much of this came up through the community. Is a huge amount of community input. Yeah, all of and this. Can can we? I was like, is there a way? Is there a mechanism by which we can go back and look at some of the community feedback and see if you know, is one of these options was generated as part of the trial? I so, I like the idea of a trial, but I also think we're going to run into the problem where we're going to have the trial for six months and you say, well, was it a success? And we're going to go back to well, what is the measure of success, right? So I'm just you know, trying to, you know, you know, are we getting maybe into the design that has already been covered with the community? Um, and we maybe, maybe has been referenced some other place. So I think my reply to that, and tell me if I'm wrong, Christian, was that when Cameron went through the four pilot alternatives that were presented to the webinar, what was made clear to me is that the, should we close the road or should we do traffic calming measures was as an either presented as an either or, but at the same time, you all had considered that traffic calming measures could be layered into any of the three pilot alternatives. So I believe that the traffic calming measures only was presented as a one pilot option, but also it, we, we, mentioned that it could also be layered on any of the other three pilot options. Right. So the so to uh, your question, Commissioner Altman, I think that the community w looked at, at some options. And I think what I'm trying to do is to say, oh, maybe it was, you know, maybe they didn't consider the idea of the layering, which could potentially improve this option. So while the community looked at all these things, um, traffic calming measures, um, you know, closing the street, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, did they look at the opportunity of maybe blending two of them to make it a better option? Yes, Thanks. That, that was discussed at the webinar. Oh, was um, it was, yes. We presented it in such a way that uh, traffic calming for the purposes of comparing the four individual options was broken out separately so that someone who only wanted traffic calming could make that in, make that intention clear. Um, and then it also was discussed that traffic calming could be a layer on any one of the other three. And there was a general support for that. General support of layering it into the other three. Okay. So it sounds like it was discussed as potential benefit or enhancement to layer traffic calming onto the other three measures. The ones that were considered, I think you said, were closing the road, making it one way. What was the other one that was considered? Uh, time of day turn restrictions. Time of day turn restrictions. Okay. So that makes me feel like the community did consider the idea of layering on um, traffic calming measures onto one of these alternatives, which is what the direction that I, I think would be productive to go. And so I feel comfortable that, and I was on the webinar that this was presented to the community and discussed. 
Um, again, we are just re making recommendations. We we aren't deciding. Just a point of clarification: Are there no driveways on the county section of Coleman? I mean, like if we close the county section of Coleman and passenger cars can't drive it, I feel like there are driveways on that street. So everyone will still have access to their driveways. They just can't get through between the county and the city portion of Coleman. So you'd still be able to get onto Coleman. Just, you know, you can't go all the way through. Yeah. Uh, and the only, I just want to clarify, the only reason as a commissioner I'm, I'm, getting down to the design element detail is not because I'm trying to design the street as much as I'm trying to understand whether we learn more by including some of the design alternatives in the pilot. We use the pilot to the best of our ability that six month period. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I just want one last question on this. So I'm really sure, um, Cameron, if we tested in the pilot to remove parking on one side of the street, would that enable us to install bike lanes? Like, would that widen the space for us to do that? And do you think, or does Christian think that that would be well received by the community based on the feedback you've gotten? Um, when I go back to the beginning of the presentation and you said what the um, point, the goals of this project were that we would measure our success against, it was improve safety for all users. Um, and then I had you it looks like when you were taking community feedback in the webinar the word cloud the most common words in the word cloud were less traffic safe biking that's from the community yeah so i think that the removal of parking on one side and providing bike lanes was an alternative early okay. on and it wasn't one that rose to the top because it would provide i, um, I think cameron mentioned this too um narrow um bike lanes Okay. That that's correct. So if you think about the um the eight foot parking lane that you would remove, right? Then you have two four foot bike lanes to then install and repurpose that space, um, which would be substandard um and weren't viewed as positively by the community as this preferred long-term option that you're looking at on the screen right okay. now. Okay. Thank you. Actually, now I'm now I'm my my curiosity is peaked. Because I've never been a huge fan of the bi-directional shared use, whatever th that thing is on the city section. I think it's, I mean, I I, I like separate facilities in general, um, especially when you have little kids. Um, and so I'm curious if, uh, so we don't have, we don't even have lanes designated right now on Coleman, right? There's no center line. And That's there's correct. No, and there's no fog line. Right. So if we removed parking and we did a temporary bike lane pilot, if we removed parking on one side, how was, would there be a striped temporary center lane to sort of designate where cars go in addition to striping for bikes? Still looking at the four foot substandard. And then my next question was going to be, how narrow could those lanes be on Coleman? And could we eke out another foot for bikes? Like, could we have nine foot lanes on the city section of Coleman, which would, could we pilot this, which would slow driver's speeds? And would that give us enough space with one lane of parking removal to have something slightly wider than four feet on each side of bike lane as a pilot? Could we do that? Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. So no. I'll, I'll I'll let Christian uh, respond about whether or not there are lanes less than ten feet anywhere in the city, and if that's something that they'd be open to. But generally, as a design goal, we use ten feet as a minimum um, for this process. So what we also did do, you know, looking for every possible inch of roadway space is. Um, we looked at actually taking the parking lane and then narrowing that down to seven feet, yeah. um, which could be done. And then you get your four and a half foot bike lanes, um, still, you know, a little narrower than I, I think people would like. Um, 
again, that was one of the design options that was presented and voted on via the surveys and discussed at all the community events um, and did not get the support that this one got. I, I get that, but we can't pilot a bi-directional multi-use path. That's the thing that we get years from now when the city's raised money and we've overcome political opposition. And a pilot is something we could do as a quick build to test. I mean, people say that they would prefer, you know, if you if you could wave a magic wand overnight and suddenly have a multi-use path, would parents like that while their kids are still in elementary school? Totally. But if you tell parents you the next have- generation of kids might get this multi-use path in a few years, and in the meantime, have fun pushing your kid along as you're biking in the middle of the traffic lane, or we could try piloting four and a half foot lanes and we could stripe them as early as nine months from now. I bet parents might have a different approach to what they might be willing to try. And I think we do have, Christiane can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know there are portions of Oak Grove where the lanes are definitely narrower than 10 feet. I think I think we went as narrow as nine and a half feet up on Sharon Road um, between Alameda and the school because that was a topic of debate when we were adding the sidewalk there. And so, and that's that sees a comparable sort of traffic with comparable times of day. Um, so I'm hoping that we can be creative here. If we're, if we're looking at a pilot, like I can totally support this closure pilot if we're doing something about the city section other than hoping people won't drive it there. But I don't, I, I'm just going to come out and say it. I will not, so I, I can't in good conscience vote for a pilot in the county section when we do nothing to the city other than add a stop sign. Um, Cause I don't think that's actually a traffic calming device. And I don't, I don't see that actually helping the kids that we're trying to help. Yeah. Yep. So, um, Okay. Um, so for the traffic calming um, devices to that we could add, yes, I'm not talking about the stop sign, but it could be the speed humps or the speed tables, um, and potentially even um, um, bulb up, like you know temporary bulb outs, similar to what we did for um, Menlo and University. Um, and then for the, I don't know about the narrower lanes. I think if for Oak Grove, I think there's a lot of buffered bike lanes. So there's a there's additional space. Um, it's not a narrow bike lane next to a narrow travel lane. Um, and then I, um, I think for Coleman, the other thing that we have to consider is that bus, you know, there's a Sam Trans bus and a school bus that uses this um, facility. So they're not as narrow um, vehicles. And so that is just the comfort of, you know, uh, a wider vehicle and a narrow bike lane. I think that, uh, Commissioner Bruzy really made an excellent point, which is, it is quite different question to ask people, Oh, look at all these alternatives. Which ones do you like best? Um, where obviously you look at this picture of this, this family walking down with a biker and a little kid and this wonderful kind of shared pathway, um, yes, I think everyone would choose that, but if that's not on the table and we're looking at a simpler approach or at least piloting a simpler approach, um, I appreciate your efforts, Commissioner Bruzzi, to get to a pilot's, uh, a, a, an approach and a pilot that includes um, some sort of protected bike lanes. And I do think that it may be worth it to go back to the community and say, okay, here's the pilot and um, we are you know, proposing four and a half foot bike lanes. If that's not possible because buses use the road, that's one thing, but, and it does sound Cameron that you've truly looked at every inch of the road, but I, I do agree. It's a much more robust pilot with the inclusion of um, bike lanes. And I also really push, I'm pushing on the parking because I just didn't hear a lot of community um objection or problems that were raised around removing maybe one side of the streets parking. I will say that on the parking issue, um, this is a classic thing that we see. Um, Homeowners that live in a neighborhood for a long time tend to show up at city meetings and advocate for what they see as for for trees, for parking, for whatever, um, for property values. Um, And I think the 1,000 plus residents of the Coleman Block apartments um, who are renters um, don't tend to show up at meetings 
um, for all the reasons that you can imagine and difficulty of outreach being one. Um, and, and I think that's the population that is using the on-street parking. I also have a hypothesis, a strong hypothesis, that people are actually not using it to come and go as much as they're using it for vehicle storage because most of those Coleman apartments only have like one parking space per unit or something like that. Um, and we talked about this at an earlier meeting. And one of the things we had asked staff to consider is doing a parking study to understand how often those cars even move. Because I think the other thing to know about Coleman is that they're grandfathered in to, they can get overnight parking permits if they live there, right? So, so um, usually in Menlo Park in residential areas, you cannot park on the street overnight unless you have a compelling case to the city. Like I live in an apartment complex that doesn't have enough parking and, and then you can get an overnight permit. So I think a lot of those cars kind of live on the street long-term, um, which doesn't mean that we couldn't find other places for them to live, which is another thing we talked about in one of our earlier meetings. Like, especially if somebody's not coming and going to that car a lot, could it could it go a little farther away? Could it be on Coleman Place? You know, could we come up with like, so I think problem solving around that is something that we'll, we'll wanna do for fairness, um, principles of fairness, I think. But I do agree that piloting, removing the parking um, if we can get a bike lane pilot out of it, that might actually then lead people to the closed section or the no through traffic section of Coleman, it could actually be pretty powerful. Like that could actually have an impact. Um, I'd love to see us try that. Yeah, I mean, I think the pilot should be aiming at like the best use of the street. I think we should be aspirational with the pilot. I'm curious, yeah. Commissioner Coleman, if you have any feedback for us on the um, parking. Yes, I mean, vehicles do stage their, their cars there probably for three days um, as a minimum. And I've seen cars there parked for at least a week. Now, they do go around and cite these vehicles for, you know, the duration of time they're parked there, which is outside of their requirement um, or their, their given time limits, right? So, you know, I, I think that there is a huge implication on people's daily lives if we remove that parking. That's gonna be a challenge for them. Cause like uh, Baruzzi has mentioned, they have one vehicle spot for their apartment. If they're in a studio or one bedroom, we're in a two bed in the Coleman apartments there and we get two spots, but we only have one car. So we do often, you know, allow guests to park there, but you know, not everyone has that luxury. So I think removing the parking would be a challenge. But we, did it. but we did come up with like this preferred alternative of like removing it on one side. And we talked, I mean, what do you think about that? Like, do you think it's an insurmountable challenge or is it like an everybody, everybody loses a little bit and everybody gains a little bit kind of challenge? You, yes, you can look at it that way. Um, I mean, there's parking on one side throughout Santa Monica to the very end of that Coleman um, city limit to then the county limit. And then on the rest of Santa Monica to the right, there's parking on both. So there may be a plausibility that you could adjust a, a removal parking given there's parking on one side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess the question also, no, okay. Thank you. If I may jump in here in the interest of time, I, I think yep. so far the, the feedback that we've heard makes sense in terms of just kind of evaluating. I, I think Christiane brought up the point and um, about kind of the limiting right away that we have or the, the width that we have, given the fact that they have, um, you know, buses. Um, it's also a, a fire route. It's a, a emergency route, et cetera. So kind of narrow bike lanes, narrow travel ways, certainly not a, a great combination. And then one side, you also have parking, which, um, you know, as a rider, I, I'm all, you're all aware that um, you, you tend to lean away from a car, right? Door zone area. So that four foot of, of length with it is really not that much if you consider that as well. So, but with that being said, I think certainly we can take that as an advisory or a recommendation from the commission we're more than happy to to go back and, and maybe take one other look at it and then including Commissioner Bruzzi's um, advisory bike lane. Um, that, that certainly has other implications, a volume split, uh, time of day, 
you know, et cetera, et cetera, to, 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 to see if it's a, even a feasible option. But I think I, I'm looking, halfway looking at Christiane as well. I think certainly that's something that we'll take that into advisory and we'll take one more look at it. And then um, as she mentioned earlier, we'll put that in the staff report of the feedback that we got from you tonight, as well as our responses to those feedback. Um, if that if that helps with the um, conversation here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just want to say that when we were presented with the Middle Avenue alternatives, um, there were, um, excuse me, we were we were presented with visuals that had the measurements by feet of every aspect of the roadway. And I would strongly suggest that when you go to the council, you've got that on there because the council was, the discussion around middle was all about like, you know, one of the council members saying like, well, the reason I'm making this decision is because of the exact measurement of the bike lane that would be allowed if you remove parking on both sides. So it gets down to those things, you know, when the council makes a decision or when we look at the merits of a proposal, I would, uh, you know, and maybe that's one of the reasons that the thing's gone on for so long, but like, I think we're really trying to get at, you know, what is possible with this pilot. Let's learn as much as we can. And if part of that is, is removing, mm -hmm parking and testing, by the way, just piloting, removing parking um, in order to test bike lanes, which don't exist right now at a street that we're trying to make a big safe route to school. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's really helpful for us to know in the city council to know um, the exact feet that are being allowed for each use of that street. I'm so, sorry, I know we're going late. Can I ask one more quick question? What's the opportunity cost of doing a pilot? So is there grant money that we would miss out on? Um, how, like, I, I keep coming back. It's like, I, I want to believe in the pilot. And then I keep remembering, wait, there's nowhere for pedestrians. Like it still doesn't solve, hmm. like what it really solves for is less traffic in the county section. And I don't, I just, which I, I, I would appreciate if I lived there. Um, and as an adult cyclist who is confident taking the lane, I'd I'd be fine with it, but for a five-year-old or a seven-year-old or, you know, like a group of people walking or people walking, I don't know, doesn't seem so great. So what's the opportunity cost of doing the pilot? Do we not get to go for the grants? So I think, I mean, there are multiple grants, um, you know, that the county TA offer through Measure A and Measure W that we can look at for pedestrian bicycle facilities. That's probably our um, one of our biggest um, grant sources, I think, for some of these um, pet bike um, funds. And there's other grant opportunities that we can look at um, down the road. And these come up, uh, you know, as regular calls. So um, I don't know that there's necessarily a cost to, you know, going um, down the pilot route. And then we will miss out on grant opportunities because there's um, constant grant opportunities that come up. Um, but I wanted to just clarify, um, so for this phase of um, what we're trying to do is kind of accept the um, the final, you know, report for the um, project. And then if we want to do a pilot or a long-term option, that even, even that still needs additional design and um, funding and direction by council to go. So... Um, I know we're having a lively discussion about the pilot, but in the end, there's still going to be more discussion on the design. We really want to kind of accept the, you know, this is what the study, you know, accomplished. This is what we heard from the community. These are the recommendations that came out of it, but we haven't, we're not necessarily like the report doesn't recommend one option over the other. This is just kind of like a summary of what happened and what we heard from the community. And then even when we choose a pilot or a you know long term, that's going to still need more um, design and and um, further outreach as well. We've been spinning our wheels for like yeah. an hour on something. That no, I don't think so. We're not we, supposed to just approve the report. Like, well, I don't no. think I don't think we're spinning our wheels because okay. I would not approve the report with the existing pilot. Okay. So I personally don't feel so like So you're I'm going to bring this back to us for more feedback. No. Yeah, I mean, if we do a pilot, we're going to want to do some evaluation and we're going to have to talk about what that looks like. And so there's going to be additional um, input. So, and 
especially given, you know, what you're talking about, like what types of things you want to add to the pilot there, um, you know, there's going to be additional outreach that's going to be needed. But that wouldn't be a separate phase. It wouldn't be part of what we're doing um, for this study. So is there a motion on the table to approve the final report that contains the pilot as suggested and the long-term design alternatives for the city and county parts? And the, the Coleman Avenue. Of them bring it back to us. It doesn't say that. Well, yeah, that would be point. after the count, if the council were to approve the report, I'm assuming you could bring it back to us and we would give you more feedback on the alternatives or is the council approving like this is what so they're just like it's not it's accepting the yes. final report not necessarily approving a you know particular alternative they can choose to you know select a preferred you know option and such but we want to kind of complete this phase of work and then move to you know i think what you're, i think what, this is a bit awkward to be like can you approve the report it contains these recommendations you know what i mean without us commenting on the recommendation I, okay, no i'm, I'm not going... saying you can't comment i'm just saying all we want or that what we're talking about for the would be another phase we wouldn't be revising the report to create new options right this would be completely understood like shows understood but the but you just did say that the city council could be like great go ahead with this so it is important for us to provide feedback. Okay, I'm going back to the staff report and it says staff is requesting feedback from the Complete Streets Commission and the public and a recommendation that city council accept the final report. But it also says they will incorporate any feedback into the final report for presentation to city council, right. which is happening next month. Yeah. So what feedback have you heard from us tonight? Is that something, do you feel like you have a good summary that you can incorporate in, into the report? Well, we did a report? motion on Ringwood. We right, we did that. on Coleman. Right. Yeah, we could do a mission on Coleman. The other thing that it says staff is looking for is feedback on next steps, including whether to pursue the pilot. Right. So we haven't been totally talking about this in vain. So we could split it. We could split the yep. motion between what do, what does the commission vote on whether we approve the pilot or not? Yeah. Maybe there's some people who are just dead against approving the pilot. And then, okay, if we, and the other motion, could be if, we, if we accept that we are approving a pilot, do we have any strong recommendations on the pilot and the design alternatives here? I'm going to throw out a motion, Go which ahead. nobody's going to like, but I'm just going to throw it out. I move that uh, staff reconsider. Hmm. I move that that we uh, support a pilot if and only if <laughs> uh -huh. it includes uh, piloted bike facilities on the city section of Coleman. Yep. And and that feels like an important prerequisite to me. And uh, can I please throw in my stop sign? <laughs> okay. And uh, there's a, um, we also have to say that we don't recommend the long term alternative. That's a separate, I separate, 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 totally separate. Yeah. separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just addressing the issue of the pilot, staff wonders if if they if it's worth pursuing the pilot. I would say yes, if. From my perspective, yes, if you're addressing the lack of any bike facility at all. However you do it, let's not design from the dais, but figure it out. Like I, I would say I would support a pilot if it included bike facilities during the pilot phase, as well as traffic calming and the stop sign at Santa Monica. Does anybody want to second that? Yes. No, go ahead, Chris. Chris. Okay. Do you want to vote on that? Call a question? Kevin, did you get that? Uh, yeah. So, so if I may, it, focusing on kind of the bike facility a, a little bit, I think generally we are in agreement that we are more than happy to go back, look at the possibility of removing parking in favor of potentially adding maybe like a bike lane, one directional bike lane. I would, however, be somewhat uh, concerned if the direction coming from the commission is that we remove parking and have to have bike lanes on both sides. I think my our concern here is there just in, isn't enough width for us to feel comfortable going with that approach. I'm more than happy to, we're more than happy to kind of explore the advisory bike lane as well. But I, I think if the motion is 
hinge on having bike facility on both directions with removal of one side of parking. I, I think our concern is too restrictive. Too restrictive. Well, no, we still just, have concern about the width. I, I'm not sure how you would ever pick which side you would want to have a bike lane on. Which, um, which will go back and kind of do some thinking that will be part of the recommendation when we go to the city council. Again, in the staff report, we'll, uh, we'll outline the feedback that we got from you guys in addition to our recommendation at that time, uh, which you know we'll go back and think about which direction makes sense. Perhaps it doesn't make sense. And then our recommendation would be, be perhaps not removing the parking. I just wanted to make sure that the commission is well aware that you know, we do have concern about the width, given um, given the width that it's unlikely that we can accommodate bike facility on both directions. You're effectively looking at a four foot bike lane, 10 foot travel lane, eight foot of parking. How are you presenting numerous options to the council. Right, uh, that I think that would be a, we would okay. accept that. Uh, okay, I'll accept that amendment. Maybe I recommend, um, <laughs> look at Christiana as but well. Can I, but can I, can I strongly like, can we stick with the original just too, which is that it doesn't make sense to do a pilot if there isn't a bike, an yes. attempt to add bike yes, facilities to the to Coleman in yeah. the city section? Are we okay? Absolutely. Well, yeah, okay, and we can so, have that in the summary as one of so your. So can we vote on that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Okay. So I'm okay. seeing unanimous votes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that part's dispatched. The long-term design alternative is uh, just based on what uh, Commissioner King said. Do, do we need to do um? Do we need to decline the long-term in favor of the pilot? No. No. But does anyone have any strong? Sorry, I know we're late, but does anyone have any strong directional uh, advice for the council around the long-term design alternatives as presented? And maybe not. I mean, I've been part of all of these or most of these workshops and meetings, and I supported the long-term design, recognizing that there are trade-offs and that not everybody in the community is excited about it. I still think for the original objectives of the study that the long-term design made sense. Um, and so I would continue to support that. And I'm still skeptical of the pilot, although I'm looking forward to seeing what kinds of rabbits our staff can pull out of their hats um, for city section of Coleman. I mean, that's just my feedback. Maybe there's potentially, let's hear from the commissioners, maybe there's potentially an opportunity to say that we believe the design alternatives are, you know, look well designed, you know, or look like they are um, uh, taking in a lot of community input and sort of, and coming up with a balanced, because uh, I do think they're balanced. I do think they do a good job of taking a lot of input in and coming up with workable, workable street um, design, in my opinion, but... Yeah, I think as far as long term is concerned, I, I think as long as the commission is generally in agreement with the concept that is pre being presented, yeah. I think that's really all we're looking for. Okay. Um, at the time of the approval, th there'll be many elements that goes into design as well, which is not something that you're purview to, to seeing right now anyways. So I think generally speaking, kind of the concept of those long term designs, whether or not you're in general agreement, I think that's all we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like you generally are in agreement with the long range or the long-term plans. I don't want to speak out the term here, but I think that's what I'm hearing. Anybody else have feedback on the long-term plans? Okay. Is there anything else we need to do? We need to move that, the, oh, go ahead, sorry. Do we need to say that in a motion? Um, I don't know, I'm just-, I, just I, If it's okay, okay with the commission, I'm more than happy to insert that into part of that previous motion. Just yes, that okay, sure, 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 sure. Yes, yeah, and yes, then we'll yes, focus yes, on the pilot. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Okay, and then I'll, I'll take that previous motion uh, for the for the permanent. It's a good idea. Thanks. I'm still not really sure about the concept of accepting the report as final if you're gonna add stuff to it. How does that work? <laughs> well, well, we'll have the caveat That's that- a work product. Yeah. Like we, right. the, we, Christian and Cameron got to this point after getting all this feedback of producing these alternatives, do you accept that this is the report we produced? Yes, I think we do, but I think because uh, there were strong, um, um, there was some input about making sure we're looking at different things, whether it's in the pilot or Ringwood, we we voiced those things. We're not just sending it up with like, that looks great. 
we're sending up with, can you please pay more attention to this and take a second look at this? Yep, exactly. And that, that those are in the capture in the motion as okay. well. So, um, yeah. Oh, this isn't in the motion. This is just feedback. I don't want to, I don't want to cloud anything else right now, but I wanted to say that, um, one difficulty when you're biking on Coleman, um, toward in the direction of Willow Oaks, Oaks park comes at that intersection, um, that gets, that can get backed up and there's nowhere for bikes to go. And I wonder if also during the pilot, you might look into solutions like red curbing parts of the, like the approach to the intersection at Willow Oaks Park um, uh, op near the Robert School opposite Menlo Barbecue, I think is a section is, is, is a funky section for people currently. Um, but just, I'm just giving you that as another piece of the puzzle to integrate into your amazing solution that you're going to come up with. Okay. Yeah. Note it. I do want to just throw out there, excuse me, I do want to say that um, I appreciated the public comments about the expense of the long-term design alternatives. And I think that was probably what um, made me look to the pilot and, and appreciate the merits of it, merits of doing a pilot um, because of the expense. Um, and I think, you know, it's a good idea in the environment we're in to, to just pause and kick the tires and make sure that the, you know, the build here would be um, the, the absolute best way, maybe even the only way to get the effects that we want on Coleman. I think that's why the pilot to me made more sense. I can think of one way that we can get it done cheaper and that's getting rid of parking. I mean, really like that's what we're really talking about, right? Um, it's, and I wanna acknowledge that when we're talking about $7 million or half of that, right? We're not just saying, oh, for the bikes, we're gonna spend three and a half million dollars so that we don't have to, um, you know, so that we can make it safer for bikes. What we're really saying is we're gonna spend three and a half million dollars because we're not willing to figure out a different solution for on-street parking. And we've mm -hmm. decided that on-street parking is worth three and a half million dollars. Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's a, like, please, can yeah. we just acknowledge that? That's that's yeah. also what we're talking about yeah. here. I mean, maybe- Let's maybe not this... just blame it on people biking. Yeah, I think actually, I don't know, Kevin, if this is useful and I may be the only one who thinks this, but this is reminding me of um, middle in the sense that um, when we talk about removing parking, I think it's so helpful to talk about in the context of, okay, well then what would happen? Like, where would that parking go? Uh, Commissioner Coleman's comments were useful to me around like, oh, I didn't know that Santa Monica had both sides of the street. You know, I think um, we put a lot, we were putting wonderful amount of effort here in collecting community input. And I really appreciate that because in middle, that was something that, you know, people raised. But I think that this idea of like, well, where, if we remove parking, can it be accommodated somewhere else is so helpful because we, do, we don't want to be a commission that just removes parking and says, yeah, just take that away. I mean, we want to know that if we remove it, there's other alternatives for people. And I think it would be helpful um, for us to explore those, those questions before the question of removing parking or the decision to remove parking comes up to us. So uh, again, with the council meeting um, a month away for you all, like maybe, um, if there hasn't, and I'm not suggesting there hasn't been work done in this regard, but if there could, is more work to be done to figure out where people would park if they couldn't park on Coleman, then I would, I would support that. Okay. Have we finished with F1? Yeah. F2? And before Sorry. we close it, I just want to acknowledge that we, I did earlier see some hands raised by um, some attendees. Uh, unfortunately, we are over the public comment period, but they are more than welcome to reach out to staff offline, uh, either by email or, or, or phone call. More than happy to have further discussions with the, with the residents. So apologies for, for not being able to um, have you speak again. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for that. Um, my chair notes are missing F3, but I think that we, um, in light of upcoming changes, um, I think we're kicking this one to a future meeting. Yes, that's that's F3. correct. Yeah. If it's okay. okay with the commission, I would like to postpone that item to uh, until June uh, when, when we have 
new commissioners on board and have a chance to maybe uh, absorb some of the subcommittee responsibilities that we have. And then at that time, we'll then agendize it again uh, for, for a future discussion. So if it's okay with the commission, I would like to postpone that item until pops June or beyond. I'm amenable. Okay. Um, okay, um, informational items. Under informational items, city staff provides an update on matters of importance to the commission. Informational items are not action items. However, a commissioner, city staff member, or a member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items. The one informational item tonight is G1, update on major project status. Um, Kevin, can you update us on major projects? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, First of all, I apologize, my laptop actually ran out of battery. So I'm gonna to try to do this off the top of my head. So I, I think the first and foremost, I wanted to inform you that the city council does have a agenda set, um, a workshop for, the, um, for their annual priority work plan. I yeah. believe it's, um, I mentioned it in one of the previous emails, March 3rd, which is a Saturday. Yes. I believe it's from 10 to 2 p.m. So for those that are interested in attending, obviously definitely want to put mark that on your calendar. But in the email that I share with you all, there is also a link to a survey, I'm sorry, a link to a questionnaire yeah. that essentially allow residents to submit their priorities ahead of time. Highly recommend that if you have um, resident friends or community yeah. members that, that might benefit from that, please do share that with them. Uh, so that way we have as many feedback as we can get um, from the residents. So that, that that's a kind of a, a city council item. In terms of project updates, uh, some of the more well-known projects, as you well know, we have Middle Avenue. I have been told that um, we will get new stop signs installed by this week, um, which will help with the enforcement as Ooh, well. Parking and, signs, not stop signs, right? I'm sorry, no parking signs. Oh. I apologize, yes. I no like, parking, okay, no, no, no stopping signs uh, up and down middle. So we're gonna have Thank a lot more signs right. up there. Enforcement would be, um, would be kind of soon follow that. Our goal with the pilot data collection right now is set for uh, data collection in the first month, first week of March. Oh, and then we'll also have a survey that will run for the duration of March uh, for for feedback, etc. So I understand some of the commissioners here have concern about the timing and of it all. So I, we will kind of take that into consideration. See how that uh, how the new no the additional signs enforcements will do for the last couple of months of uh, February and then make a final decision at that time. Um, but uh, as many of you know, when it comes to data collection, uh, what I would recommend is we can always collect the data, see what they look like, and uh, we can always collect them again That's true. Uh, at, at a later time if there's a need for it. So certainly don't want you to think that once we collect the data, that's it. There's no, no, no more opportunity. That's, that's never gonna be the case. Um, so, oh, Belhaven construction, uh, that's the traffic calming construction. Happy to announce that most of the curb extension as well as the speed tables are now in. There are some punch list items that we'll need to address uh, in the next month or, or in the next week or so. However, the, the main, the follow, the, the next step, weather permitting is the striping and the signage work that goes along with that. Um, but unfortunately, the weather forecast doesn't seem to be very corroborating. So for some of you that might get some feedback about, hey, are there additional signage or striping that will go along with all this uh, civil work that went into? The answer is yes. Uh, we're just waiting for the weather to clear, unfortunately. Um, and then with that, I think I was going to update. Oh, um, there was a question about middle field and woodland. Happy to yes. announce that we do have a consultant on board now to do that study. Excellent. So um, that will be something that, you know, staff will be working Excellent. in the next few months or so in the background and then eventually will be coming to the commission with some sort of recommendations oh, for that stretch. So do definitely want to stay tuned for that. And with that, I will conclude my update. Can I make a few comments really fast? First yeah. of all, those informational items were so informational. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I just want to make a quick comment. So last year I attended the city council priority setting meeting on March, the Saturday, first Saturday in March, and it was incredibly interesting um, and, uh, you, and informative about, because they basically are deciding on the priorities for the year and to hear the feedback they get from the public. There's a lot of public comments and the feedback that came in um, 
prior to the meeting through the um, uh, city council inbox. It was it was really interesting to hear about what to see the input that the city council gets on priorities and also to to see them process it like right right in front of everyone. Um, but I would I, I appreciate what you said, Kevin. I would strongly say that if you have um, comments to make about the priorities of safe streets or you have people who are very interested in safe streets and complete streets who want to make sure that the council makes it a priority. I think it's really useful to make a comment at the meeting or to send in a note, send in an email to the inbox. So yay. And the other thing um, you mentioned, oh yes, yeah, so Middle Avenue feedback. So thank you, Kevin. Uh, let us, you're really good at doing this. I would just urge other commissioners when you say, hey, the feedback survey is going out about middle, like let your friends know about it or people you know who live in the area know about it. Um, we should definitely do that because um, I feel like we can support you in getting a lot of feedback by going on next door or just spreading the word. Um, I know that you guys really count on the feedback you get um, to evaluate the work you're doing. And so we should support you. Okay. That's it. I am just wondering if um, we want to acknowledge that we're, we're down one commissioner yes. and about to be down another. Um, yeah, well, we definitely have. This is Chris's last meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. Did, yeah. The, did, did we talk about that or? OK, Jackie, okay. Well, further to that, am I permitted to be on the commission's meetings moving out of uh, cities? Yeah, so commissions are only for um, Mellow Park residents. So I apologize. <laughs> when um, are you moving? Uh, when are you moving? Next week. Oh no, just really is the last meeting then. Yeah. Okay, well, did you want to do something? Well, before I have to, like, yes, before we get to that. To that. Part, so, okay, yeah. sorry, Jen. Um, yes. First, thank you so much for addressing the Middle Avenue parking, parking thing. Yeah. I, I will say that today on my way home from, uh, from school at 3.30 when it was raining is the first time I've ridden down Middle since we did this pilot. Oh that there were actually no cars in it, but mostly because it was raining and no one was at the park. Um, so um, the parking okay. seems to have gotten worse. Uh, anyway, um, I, I do wanna have just a couple of like street related things. And one of them is um, I was kind of amazed at the super fast work of public works because there was a gigantic pothole at the intersection of Middle and El Camino by that gas station and like, a day and a half later, it was gone. And so um, it was kind of amazing. Um, but the other thing I would say is um, like there's still debris in the bike lane from Monday's storms. And so one of the things I ponder is how our streets, like if we're doing all these bike lanes, we, we need to keep them, like there's still branches in the um, mm -hmm. bike lane. And then, um, which, you know, in the next storm, like all that stuff's just going to clog the storm drain. And uh, there was another piece to that with all the bike lane is, is that is the I'm sorry is the suggestion there because I I see this on Santa Cruz too is your thought that um, part of is the street cleaning timed with the storm right so or? I'm unclear like I understand that the street cleaners do come out like on the regular schedule and often after storms I've just been noticing that since this last storm there there's still piles of pine needles and. Um, on, on roads that are definitely ours. Um, and then, uh, gosh darn it, why does the second thing just keep leaving my brain? I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if other folks find this, but I I feel like I see people stop and move a branch a bit. I mean, I'm saying this should be the policy. This works all the time, but I do see a bit of sort of citizen action right. going on right. with well, like, yeah. neighbors yes. or bikers or but whoever. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to be sweeping the bike lane on my way to work. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, in terms of me, yeah. like I'm saying as neighbors, like I know on Santa Cruz, like we, we know Hillview kids are using Santa Cruz bike lanes. I see people going out and like moving branches. And right. And, and before, I mean, cause partly, at, you know, 20 minutes, twice a day, I have to ponder these things. Um, I like, I do notice that the gardeners generally blow all the leaves into the street, which generally winds up in the bike lane. So I get that the street sweeper could come through the day before the gardener comes through, but just know that if we're building bike lanes across the city and reconsidering the experience for bikes, that um, stuff in the bike lane is- uh, Actually, I think that's a concrete, yeah. I think it's a concrete thing if oh, you wanted to bring it to council. I think that's legit. I mean, maybe that we could talk about that in the agenda setting meeting. 
but I mean, I could see saying to council, like, can we ask that, you know, pass a thing that, you know, um, gardeners don't put thing, leave things in the bike line. I mean, they should put it in compost. So anyway, so I think, I think those are legitimate and, and maybe we can, you know, actually do some actions around those. Thank yeah, you. no, I mean, I, I think a good point. As, as far as like cleaning up is concerned, yeah, the, uh, street crew, crew goes, um, the, the regular street cleaning, the, the same crew that, that does the, the pothole repair is also would be the same crew that kind of do the cleanup of the bike links as well. So, but definitely, um, if, if you see anything that is like, you know, piling up, do email it to us or uh, we have a secret fix yep. that, that I highly recommend as well. And, and our, our crew, you know, the small crew, but they're mighty crew that they'll, they'll get to it as soon as they can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then like, thank you so much, commissioner Coleman for your, like, for mm -hmm. your input and like your feedback. And I hope that you'll like keep um, anybody else can talk too, but like, I, we've really appreciated having you on the commission and um, I hope that uh, San Jose has a similarly styled commission that you can yeah. join because, yeah, um, yeah the, they Much have, bigger, but yeah. yes, they well, good. Yeah. That, oh, Very good. Cool. Cause they have some bike pedestrian things they're trying to iron out there too. So uh, I think uh, they're going to get a good member. Let's give a round of applause for yeah. Commissioner Coleman's service. Any parting words of wisdom? <laughs> None. We wish you all the best and congratulations you. on your home. It's really exciting. Really exciting. All right. Um, I think we're done for the evening. And thank you, everybody, for staying late and a vigorous discussion. Okay. See you in a month. Great. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Take a break.